starting lineup for today's 400 miler. Mayfield and Ryan Newman on the front row, both looking to dig out of a point hole that was dug for them in New Hampshire last Sunday. And back in row two, Brian Vickers, for best as rookie challenger, his 10th top five start of the season, and Elliot Sadler, his best Dover start ever. Good qualifying runs for Michael Waltrip and Bobby Labonte. Mikey finished sixth here in June. He'll start in row three. Labonte, the 99 winner, hasn't had a top 10 finish since early July. And Rusty Wallace, three-time Dover winner, and Matt Kenseth on the outside of row four. And while we look at the rest of the starting lineup and the cars are on their parade and pace laps, at some point we'll get back to Carl Edwards in row eight, who arrived at the racetrack this morning literally this morning <laughs> straight from las vegas after running the nascar craftsman truck race last night let's try and hook up with him walk him a shot hey carl edwards this is wally up in the booth can you hear me i got you loud and clear wally i didn't wake you up did i what's that i didn't wake you up did i well you're a little bit loud there wally but uh <laughs> man i'm pretty excited about today it's gonna be a good run we uh we had us a little bit of a tough night last night in our super chip truck but I love this racetrack. How concerned are you that, you know, you really don't have any time in this car as far as you had somebody else set the car up for you, and now you've got to go barreling into turn one, not really knowing what to expect. Are you concerned about that? Well, uh, man, I hate it that you brought that up, Wally. I hadn't really thought of it like that, but uh, I think we'll be all right. Dave Blaney's an awesome driver, and Bob Osborne and the guys are, are really good at their jobs, and they've, they've made me look really good so far, so... Uh, Hopefully that continues today. Well, good luck out there. Buddy. Carl Edwards. RPM's call. On board his uh, Roush 99. And going to take the green flag in row number eight. The rest of the starting lineup. Back to the guys who got in on provisionals. Terry Labonte in a backup car. He'll drop to the tail of the line. He had a hard crash in qualifying. Jeff Fuller, Joe Rutman back in row 20. And last starter, Kirk. Shelmer. No, I'm sorry. There's Jeffrey Bodine and Morgan Shepard, row 21. Now we'll go to the final starter. Kurt Shelmerdine. 50 cars entered the race, only 43 able to start. There are the drivers who will not be in today's field. And we told you about Terry Labonte going to the back. Jeffrey Bodine, also uh, his team changed an engine in their car, so he will go to the tail end of the field. Getting ready to go green. Let's get some stories from Pit Road, Marty. Alan written on the dry erase board in the 38 trailer of Elliott Sadler that says, we can win Dover, believe. This is not Elliott's best track. He knows that. His best finish here, only 10th. But today he has his favorite race car, and as BP said, his best ever start of fourth. He told me right before he got in the car, we have a top six race car, and I would take a top six at Dover today, Matt. Marty Rusty Wallace starts seventh. BP mentioned he has three wins here in the Monster Mile, but that was when the track was asphalt. Now at the concrete, he's trying for his first win here on the concrete. His team told me their car is just as good or even better as their teammate Ryan Newman, who's had so much success here in the past. In fact, they said Rusty's been talking all morning. Things like fast hot rod, I'm all jacked up, and in Rusty speak, that means he is very good for today, Dave. Matt, can he close the deal? That's a question for Casey Kane this time, who was leading here at Dover in June when he spun in somebody else's oil, causing a big wreck. Casey's still looking for his first victory. Could come here today. I talked to him at Driver Introductions. Said, I'm not sure if we're as good as we were in June, but I bet he might be, Bill. Well, Dave, right now, the focus for every driver is forward. Forward at the car in front of him, forward at the first lap, forward at 400 laps, forward at victory lane. And for 10 talented drivers forward on the championship. This is a race where you have to watch where you're going and you hope the other guys are watching where they're going. So race fans, help your favorite driver focus because right now he's facing 42 competitors and one gnarly monster. They have added an extra pace lap. They're working on cleaning up some dust and dirt where the crossover traffic uh, trips is the back straightaway here. It's going to be another minute or so. Let's take a break before the start. In Delaware's capital city, race nine, or the ninth race left in the chase for the next Dell Cup. You know what I meant by that. I did. <laughs> is one lap away from starting here on the Monster Mile. Got your computer nearby, your television set. You can log on to NASCAR.com's Pit Command with Track Pass, the new Nextel Chase Edition featuring live standings for the 10 chase contenders. For more exclusive chase content and live racing action, go to AOL and NASCAR.com. Well, we would if we were home, but we're not. We're going to be busy, so we'll not be able to get 
I'll pick command, but we'll know. We've got the computers that originate all that stuff here, though. Exactly. So. Exactly. And you can also log on to NASCAR.com and ask Wally and Benny. Anything you'd like. Anything at all. Not anything. We don't have the answers for everything. I'm not Almost saying, everything. I'm not saying you're going to... I'm not saying you're going to answer all the questions. I'm saying they could ask anything you'd like. But if it's if it's a good question, you know, those two handsome gentlemen will ask. True. Will answer. The track cleanup. They've had some of the jet blowers out there working that dust and dirt off the back stretch where the crossover gate goes. They've also run the jet blowers through the corners. Some of the tire debris you can still see at the top of the. Uh, yeah, there's there. still a lot of debris that's outside the groove. Yet you wind up outside the groove sometimes. You get. The car will slide up there, and uh, when that stuff gets on your tires, it feels like you have a flat tire. It takes a lap or two to get it off, so it would have been nice if it was not there, and I'm sure guys that run into it are going to have their hands full. But here we go, 400 laps in the MBNA America 400 at Dover, and the green flag is up. That was an interesting start. Wow. The 12 car looks like he was laying back for a run. Look at Ryan Newman come on the outside. Normally, the bottom groove is the better groove to be in at the start of the race, but Newman's proven that wrong. Five bonus points toward the championship for Ryan Newman for leading lap one. Well, they do get single file quick, don't they, here? 25 got slid up the racetrack. It looks like he's going to lose a spot to Elliot Sadler and maybe Michael Waltrip. So Elliot Sadler to third. And Michael Waltrip not able to finish that pass on Brian Vickers. So Vickers hangs on the fourth in the 25. And that's good for him because a lot of times at this point in the race, the 25 car Brian Vickers slides up. Ten cars could have passed him. It's almost like you get hung out on the draft. So this early in the race, you don't want to get up in that spot that Bobby Labonte is in the 18th car right now. Dusty Wallace to the seventh, passing Bobby Labonte. Now Jamie McMurray in 42, working on Labonte's 18. That'll be for eighth place. As the scoring ticker comes by throughout the day, remember the ten drivers competing for the Nextel Cup are denoted in the Nextel yellow background on the ticker. You can follow the championship chasers throughout the afternoon. We see it, Bobby Labonte still high on the racetrack. Cars keep going through. Dale Jarrett goes through. Ricky Rudd, the 21 car, now trying to get by. Labonte is struggling to stay down in that low line right now. The 21 car, Ricky Rudd is gonna go past. So that'll be Bobby back to 12th place after starting in sixth. Just five laps ago. On board Dale Jr. next up behind Labonte. Jr. started 16th, so has moved up three spots to 13th. And last week's winner, Kurt Busch, stalking him. 97 car. Right there on the bottom. But if anybody gets that top groove work, whoa, turn a little bit loose off of the turn four there. And just enough for Kurt Busch to take advantage. Puts Kurt to 13th, Junior back to 14th. I was going to say, if anybody gets that high groove working, it'll be the nine car. Casey Kane. Yes, Casey Kane will start using it like he did yesterday, the Bush race. Farther back, side by side racing here. Greg Biffle in the 16, trying to get a spot from Scott Riggs. And Jeff Gordon tucked right behind them. I talked to Doug Randolph, the crew chief on the 10 car, Scott Riggs this morning, and they changed everything on the car this morning because they just could not find the handle they were looking for yesterday. And, and probably BP, I bet you 42 out of the teams out there were, I mean, a lot of cars are tight. This racetrack will normally be tight, especially when you start burning off the fuel and your tires get worn and the cars will start sliding. They won't turn on this racetrack, and this is normally what Dover is all about. Jeff Gordon is sitting back in 18th place, about to take 17th away. Marty? Low progress early for Jeff Gordon. Started 21st, is coming to the front. Yesterday in happy hour, the car was, quote, terrible, according to Robbie Loomis this morning. He said we were all over the place, and 
now I'm worried about this race. This is one race I came into thinking we would do very well. Now I'm worried about it. I'll know in the first few laps whether or not we'll be good. So far, it looks pretty good for the 24 bus. He's having some trouble trying to get by Riggs, and now Tony Stewart has closed up behind Jeff Gordon. Looks like Riggs and the 10 car, if the car is working in the turns better than it did yesterday, so the changes that Doug and the crew made this morning are working. And Matt Kenseth, folks, is going somewhere. He is going to town in a hurry. He goes by Elliott Sadler and moves into the third position. But Wally, we knew when he qualified in the top 10, he was going to be pretty good race-wise. Yeah, because he normally does not qualify very well, and it takes him a long time to get to the front. But when he qualifies already up to the front, watch out. And he runs this racetrack very well. Three top 10 finishes in the last four races here at Dover for the defending series champion, Matt Kenseth. Mark Martin. Tracking him, started 12th. He's uh, just moved around body to body to pick up 14th. So he lost a couple of spots in the opening lap shuffle, but now he's trying to pick his way back forward, Matt. Alan, you can just hear the enthusiasm and the confidence in Mark's voice when he was on the wagon in the second car countdown to green. And we've got a smoker on the racetrack. That's Casey Kane, Matt, down in the apron of the racetrack, appears to not be under power. Uh, oh, it's an engine problem because he, he let the clutch out in the back just to let the engine run again to make sure, and the caution flag is out. Tough break for Casey Kane. Put the window net down and get some air inside that car because it's full of smoke. So first yellow at lap 13 as uh, Casey Kane, who started in 20th place, is going to head to the garage and apparently have an early end to his afternoon. Ryan Newman, the race leader, collecting five bonus points toward the championship after getting the jump on Jeremy Mayfield at the start, much to the delight of his Penske Racing South crew. Oiled down the racetrack, his car has been pushed to the garage. He's also oiled down the pit lane, so pit road is closed. NASCAR Bush Series update. Martin Truex Jr. with his fifth win of the season here at Dover yesterday. Took the lead from Kenny Wallace with 11 to go, and Kenny ran out of gas. Truex opening up the biggest championship lead of the season in the Bush Series after Kyle Bush had some issues. 152 points for those drivers with seven races to go. NASCAR Bush Series at Kansas Speedway one week from Saturday. Last night, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, Shane Meal scored his first Craftsman Truck Series win, passing Todd Modine, coming to the white flag. Six races to go in the Craftsman Truck Series. Bobby Hamilton leading Dennis Setzer by just a little bit. Pretty good championship Pretty race close. going yep. there. And here at Dover, the pace truck continues to lead the field around while the cleanup crews go to work on a large stream of liquid that has been placed all around the Monster Mile. 20 grand to them, Elliott Sadler's team leads Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s in the race for the season-long $200,000 prize in the McDonald's drive through Championship, fueled by Powerade. Dave? Talking to uh, Casey Kane, who's chatting with Carter Ray Evernham right now. Casey, what did that feel like or sound like? I was just going down the front stretch, just popped, uh, and then it started vibrating real bad. I guess uh, something, flywheel or something underneath uh, broke, so I don't know. They might try to fix it. It's pretty early in the race to to go home so it's not completely destroyed well we're not sure yet but it it might not be okay hey Ray um, obviously with the team car out there and Jeremy were you running anything different on the nine car and do you have any concerns no it's our same stuff you know our engine guys have been doing a great job all year long so it's kind of uh, unlike them to have a problem but uh, again when you have a problem most of the time it's from uh, a part that those guys didn't make and right now it looks like the car broke a flywheel and we're trying to find out why and when it broke the flywheel it tore up the back of the engine block we're going to pull the transmission and bell housing off and possibility we could go back out but we'll see okay they're working on it guys marty they pit stops beginning jeff gordon comes in 21st to 16th for the 24 car too tight in the middle good off the corners half of a spring right around the left rear bill dale earnhardt jr said his car was just a little tight he wanted four fresh tires said he could have lived with it but i'm going to judge by how many guys coming in front of me as to whether or not i pit he's on his way a lot of traffic on a crowded pit road what you got here is about half the field pitting and in the other half staying out. So this is uh, really going to jumble up the running order. One, one advantage, these guys that make the pit stop now, they can run another 20 laps on fuel. So if this thing goes about 190 miles green, they can stay on the racetrack. Those other fellas got to come in and then they catch a college flag. They're going to put those guys a lap down. So 
Mark Martin first off the pit lane. We'll check where that puts him in the restart order in a moment. Still under caution here at Dover. We should get back to racing shortly. Touch to mile about to go back racing with Ryan Newman as the leader. The top 14 drivers did not pit under this caution. 15th place, Mark Martin, first in line with the fresher tires as the uh, scoring ticker comes across the top of your screen. And we go back to full speed. Matt Kenseth, the second place car, 17. Looking for second on the inside of Jeremy Mayfield. He's got it. Here comes Rusty Wallace, a two car on the inside of Elliott Sadler, 38. Going to keep Sadler shuffled up into that high side. Jimmy Johnson's going to get him too, maybe. Down there beside him. Yep. Now he finally gets a break. As you watch the scoring tickle, you're, you'll notice that Jeff Burton will be shown one lap down back in 41st place. Penalized for pitting outside the box on pit road. We talked about how crowded this Dover pit lane is, but there are specifications for which parts of your car you're allowed to have outside the box and which you're not. He ran a follow that rule. It's a one lap penalty. And, and another problem is by the time they released him, these guys were getting the green. So he really lost a lot of time because he had to go 35 miles per hour on pit lane while these guys were flying on the race. Track. Tony Stewart and Robbie Gordon with a close call a second ago. <laughs> what? That's before the restart. What's that all about? Wow. What? Gee, I wonder why they're doing that. <laughs> These Man. guys don't forget. They La don't. <laughs> Last week, Robbie Gordon, on purpose, ran in the 16 car. Greg Biffle spun him, and when Biffle spun around, Tony Stewart had no place to go, ran in the side of him, and uh, eliminated his car from the competition and allowed New Hampshire. And he's, I guess that's his way of telling Robbie that uh, he, he hasn't forgotten. And we talked to Robbie Gordon today in a pre-race show and asked, have you talked to the principals involved? He said, well, I haven't talked to Tony yet. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> he hasn't talked to Tony yet. The only thing about that that makes sense to me is that Robbie was, was looking for the jump on the restart and trying to get a spot to the outside of Tony because where they were on the racetrack, the better where the leaders were, you know? Yeah. He must have he must have had a good jump on the restart and tried to squeeze to the outside of Tony or something. But the contact yeah. afterwards, that was, that was hate. That, that wasn't appreciated. Right. Ryan Vickers oh, he's has having trouble. Yeah, he's falling back to eighth place and maybe losing more, Matt. Remember, this is a backup race car. Now, he is complaining about the same tendency that he's been complaining about all race. The car is just way too free. He's just trying to hang on. They didn't want to pit back on lap 19 and give up that track position. So for now, he's just hanging on to what he has. Oh, that's unusual, a guy to be that free here because most of the cars, everybody complains about being tight. And we haven't seen that high line where the 25 car Vickers is now trying to get around. We haven't seen that being the fastest way around the racetrack. All the cars now are making their speed on the very bottom down next to the white line. Where Casey Kane's out. Yeah, <laughs> Casey Kane is out. He get that top groove worked in real quick. So Kenseth closing on Ryan Newman for the race lead as they put a lap on Kirk Shelberty. And Jeremy Mayfield not all that far behind. Kenseth. Pretty fair to say, the quick car in the opening laps of the race. There's Tony Stewart back in 21st, now 22nd place. Matt, what's up there? We talked about the Discover Car count down the green about Tony Stewart's great success here. He's going to have to really get up on the wheel some more. He came on the radio and told Greg Zipidelli, I feel like I might have bashed in the fender. His team is looking at our video just to see if there is indeed damage to that right front corner of the 20 car. And here we come, Ken to the 17, going for first. I think Newman will just let him have it, as he does. So when Matt comes back around, five bonus points for the championship for him. Bill? And no panic for Ryan Newman. Matt gets those five bonus points. But that caution may have helped the 12 team. They did have some debris stuck on the grill of their car. When the caution came out, the combination of the slower speed and getting behind the pace car blew that paper off. That cut Ryan a break. That's good news for him. Cook an engine quick if you get that grill opening covered. Jeff Gordon just got by Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. Jeff Gordon at 24. As he goes by Kirk Chamonix. That's about uh, for 13th. 
Jeff Gordon started the race back in 21st place. And he was one of those guys that hit it. Yes, he did. So they may have uh, made a few adjustments on that car to get a little bit better for Jeff. And you see on top of the screen the chase for the next elf gun. Mac Kenza will now be the leader as, as they run. Just taking a look around at a couple things. Jeff Gordon restarted 26th when Green went at lap 22. So here at uh, lap 35, he's already moved up to 13th. The other thing, just checking the farthest forward guy who got fresh tires there is Dale Jarrett running in 10th place. Junior, Brian Vickers, 8 and 25, 13th place. We'll give that one to Junior. And Vickers running that high line because he's loose. He, he can't turn the wheel. He can't turn the steering wheel. So actually, when you're up on that high line, you turn the steering wheel the least. And that's why you run up there when the car is wanting to go sideways. Bill? On the eight car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Alan, that car now is free. Just a little bit too free for him. Remember, he said the four tires I have are okay. If I want, but they came in, pitted, took four, and now his car is just a little loose. And Wally, I am surprised a lot of guys down here talking about a loose race car, and that normally not the case here. Well, I think that everybody was so tight yesterday, I think everybody was so concerned about it, they may have over adjusted and went too far. And if, if you're new to NASCAR, just to uh, gather up some of this terminology, free, loose, a car that is oversteering, you turn it to the left, and it wants to, the back end wants to spin out. Uh, tight push understeering a car you go into the corner turn it to the left and it wants to keep going straight well as they say when the car is loose you back in the wall and they're pushing or tight you hit the wall with the front but yes the when the car is loose the front tire sticks to the racetrack and the back end is trying to slide right now Matt Kenseth look like he's pretty good So Matt Kenseth, second leader of this race. Ryan Newman led 32 laps. Kenseth now out in front for six and counting. The defending series champion comes into the race fourth in the Chuck Up Series, the second race in the chase for the next Delcom. Time to take you on a ride on a visa through the field. We start with Matt on Matt. Go, Yoko. Matt Kenseth is pulled out to just about a second lead over Ryan Newman. He came on the radio and he got turn two crash. Turn two. Ryan Vickers has hit the wall hard. Finally could not hang on to a loose yeah. race car. Man. How the world did he turn the front and back up that badly? Se now, second car of the weekend. This Boy. place is, uh, you know how it is. You hit the outside, then you go down the racetrack, and there's another wall right there for you. Yeah, I guess that's what happened. You see the softer barriers in the inside. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. You see the safer barrier there against the inside wall, though you'll note here at Dover there is no safer barrier on the outside wall yet. They came here to do the engineering and discovered that the outside walls of this racetrack are made of boilerplate steel instead of concrete, and they haven't attached a safer barrier to the steel yet, so they're having to go back and re-engineer how they're going to do that. So it is installed on the track where the concrete walls are, but not where the steel walls are. And the safer barrier that you're talking about is that, that cushion here between the concrete wall here and the steel there. Your, your, your toy, VP. Watch the top of the screen for Brian Vickers in the 25 car. Like we said earlier, he's been using that high line, and the reason you use the high line when your car is loose, like I said, you don't want to turn the steering wheel. When you turn the steering wheel, like VP was saying earlier, front tires are sticking better. So he went up and hit the outside wall, and then... Like I said, you go down and there's nowhere to go. You hit the inside wall. That's how you get both ends. There's the front. Gonna slide directly back across the racetrack right in front of Ouch. AC Mears. Fortunately, that was a one car. Not fortunate for a 25 as Ryan Vickers, but that could have been a lot worse. A lot of other guys could have got in that wreck. Now we'll see who pits and who doesn't here. Most of the field coming in. Everybody coming in, looks like Marty. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson first stall on pit road. Allen running at six right now. He said we're back in business. The car is as it should be right now, though it's a little bit tight down in the right rear, Matt. The killer bees going to work on Matt Kenza's Ford already around the left side. He says the car is still a tick tight through the center of the corner. Robbie Reiser gonna fix that with air pressure adjustment on the left side, Bill. Ryan Newman has an excellent pit stall. The car was a little loose, then it got a little tight. They think the track's gonna change. No adjustments, four tires, fuel day. Jeremy Mayfield's pit stall even better. Nobody in front of him. Four tires, track bar adjustment. They will not win the race.
saw pit road and track bar adjustment because the car was very loose. Matt Kenseth going to be first off the pit lane, but he will not be the race leader. Check the scoring line. See Kenseth and Newman and Rusty Wallace in two. And there's Jeremy for that first pit stall. McMurray sneaking by on the outside. I got three drivers who have not pitted, two of them on the lead lap. New leader is going to be Ward Burton when we come back to the Monster Mile. Allen, and the good news is he's okay. Boy, that was a hard lick, Brian. What happened? Yeah, this has not been my weekend. No, we've had a half a couple of instances. The car was uh, was a little too loose to start with. A little, it was a lot. It was a lot loose actually. Um, and I was just trying to make the high line work. Uh, we finally got the car uh, right there. The last five five laps found a good line. Uh, the car was, uh, you know, had some decent speed in it, even though as loose as it was. And I just kind of pushed it a little bit too far and got up in the marbles and got up just a little bit too high and it just it just came around. Once I got up uh, got up in the marbles, there really wasn't a lot I could do. I was just trying to keep it off the wall as much as possible. But I feel bad for the guys. They worked hard all week. They got the backup ready. We qualified third. Uh, we were just a little too loose and uh, you know we had time to work on it, but. You know, I messed up and uh, lost it, and uh, now here we are. But you know, I'm, I'm fine. I just, like I said, I hate it for the GMAC crew. He started third. The day will end early. Good news is, like he said, he feels just fine. And here we go to the green with Matt Kenseth leading. Ward Burton and Ken Schrader stayed out green, green, green. initially, each to lead a lap. Ward had then gone to the pits to report from Dave is. He's got a little engine issue going on there they're trying to rectify. And Schrader led a lap to get some bonus points. And then he went to the pits. So it's Kenseth, Newman, Rusty Wallace, Mayfield, and Jimmy Johnson, your top five. Man, it's like a ragged, ragged restart. Yeah, there was something going on back there on that restart in turn four. I know it was around Mark Martin and Joe Marlin. Maybe Tony Machek. Dale Jarrett working on Jeff Burton. Remember Burton not on the lead lap. One lap down, 34th place after pitting out of the box. Elliott Sadler outside lane, going to lose a couple spots in the 38. Here comes Kurt Busch by him, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Jr. waiting to try and pounce. Elliott Sadler was eighth last time by. Not this time, Dave. And Elliott Sadler does not like the outside line here. He loves running the bottom line and nothing else. I asked him this morning, have you ever run the outside line here? And he said, not unless I'm going backwards. <laughs> well, that's what's happening well, right now. Well, he's going backwards because they keep going by. Junior goes by in the eight car. And here comes. And the, see, Elliot could not keep the car on the bottom of the yeah. right track. He moved up, and Greg Fimple, 16, gets alongside of him. That point in the corner, that's like when he when he went to put the power back down. The car kind of took off on him in a little bit, huh? Matty? Fimple working the inside. Trying to score a cup win here. He's had a lot of bush success. He says the car, that last run was just way too tight at the two-third mark of the corner. He just could not get in the gas when he needed to. Talking about Greg Biffle in the 16 who just went by. Elliott Sadler, so Biffle up to 11th place. Sadler back to 12th. And he's got four more Predators looking for that spot, but in his back bumper. And Mark Martin, the sixth car, he had such high hopes for this racetrack and running well, but right now seems to be struggling to get around the track. And he's got a crushed rear bumper. Matt? Running in the 13th position, Mark says the car is just real loose right now, too loose to start off the run, which is really a problem they had in final practice as well. He needs a long run for this car to come to him and also for the track to tighten up. Look at how that left rear, the back of that left rear corner is flared out just a little bit. How much is that going to affect him before the next pit stop? It's going to make a change. It's going to make a difference because it's drag. The car is not going through the air as well as it should. Well, I'd like to see the nose of the car that did that. You think it looks something like the back of the six yeah. car, huh? No, well, it couldn't have been all that heavy because the camera survived. In the back bumper of Mark's car. Radio traffic from Mark Martin just after the restart. Let's listen in. This thing is bad skittish in the back, you know, with that rubber in there. It's uh, just real skittish. It was a little free, but pushing off the corner. But, uh, but the back not in the racetrack right my mistake, that was just before the restart. So they must have added a spring rubber. I received the, on the restart that Wally and I talked about being a little bit ragged. 
Mark goes up and he has to check up to keep hitting the 16 car. And then the 01 of Nemechek runs in the back of Mark. Mm. So he needs to see the nose of the 01 car and see if there's any damage to his car. Mark Clark running in 13th place and holding station for the moment. Casey Mears just took a spot away from Sterling Marlin, and he's now the guy chasing Mark Martin. That's Casey in the target car, 41. He's up to 14. Guy needing a good finish here at Dover, Casey Mears. He has not had any good luck at this racetrack during his time. How about the uh, front end of the 01 car for Joni Machek? Yeah, as you can see, there's some pretty good damage right where that yellow piece of tape is. Joe came on the radio and said, I win. No one else did. They had the same problem last week when he hit Dale Earnhardt Jr. The water shot up to 250, but that's where it stayed all day. You can see the damage on the front end of the 01. Joe has not complained about the water tip yet, but more than likely he will before the end of the day. Probably will. Looks like there's some damage there around the uh, entrance to where the water gets cooled. We'll see. And Junior in the A car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. all over the back of the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. And going to take ninth place, well, going to try and take ninth place away from him. Not this time, Bill. Well, uh, he'll probably keep trying, don't you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, four tires and fuel and an air pressure adjustment on that last stop. The car was good. Junior was happy. That's a dangerous combination for everybody else. <laughs> Here he goes again. And I think Gordon will just eventually let him go, like right there. Doesn't look like, like the 24 car can stay on the bottom either, Benny. It's trying to keep it on the bottom, but... All right. Marty, what is he saying? See, right there, the 24 shoots up the racetrack, right in the middle of the corner. Marty? Yeah, Wally, he's been having a problem with being too loose off the corner. Same thing with his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. They start to run loose, and Jeff said, I'm terrific in traffic, but when I'm by myself, the car just does not run as well. And you see, he's got a little bit of clean air between him and the car in front of him, so when he gets up close to that car, the car runs well, but when he's all by himself, the car just way too loose for Jeff. So Gordon falls back to 11th place as Greg Biffle gets by him in addition to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Up front, it's all Matt Kenseth right now ahead of Ryan Newman by six tenths of a second after 70 of 400 laps in the MBNA America 400 at Dover. Call by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. And by new M3 power from Gillette. The new power behind the Gillette Young Gun. Pack house over International Speedway. These fans always get their money's worth. They're getting 400 laps of it today. We tried this once before, but we want to be everywhere we want to be. So let's try another visa through the field. And once again, it's that double play combination of Matt and Matt that leads it off. And Matt Kansas has a full rearview mirror of the 12 car. Ryan Newman says the car was a little free off before the pit stop. It didn't want to work out. They just wanted to work on the tight to the center as he walks on the inside of the 31. Ryan Newman in that 12 car looking at the bumper of the 17. They talked about the car was just a little loose before they pitted. They didn't make any changes because they think the track will tighten up. Rusty Wallace also took four tires. No changes on his number two car. His pit stop, 12.89 seconds. That helped the two pick up a couple of spots. Bill, Jerry Mayfield restarted fourth. 11 laps into this run, he radioed that it felt like it was rolling over the right rear, but when the air temperatures came up, the car is as fast as the leaders. Marty? On the last stop for Jimmy Johnson, he said, let's get a small swing at this car being tight. So all they did was add a pound to the right rear tire, Dave, but now the car is still tight for Jimmy Johnson. They have not loosened it up. He has two wins, and his five driver starts looking good so far today, Dave. Dale Jarrett in sixth place has made up no ground, but they made up ground after their first pit stop where they made a big adjustment to fix a tight condition. No changes on the last stop. DJ's rolling. The 97 car of Kurt Busch restarted ninth. He's moved his way up to seven. The car was a little tight in the center, loose late. They made an air pressure adjustment did fix that bill dave jamie mcmurray in the 42 running okay he was tied off and loose in they made an air pressure and chassis adjustment but there might be a driver adjustment needed jamie says he is fatigued he feels tired his eyes are watering so we'll keep listening for that right 
behind him, the eight car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Good news for Jr. fans. His words to the crew, the car is awesome. Just got passed by the 41, though. Jr. also has a little bit of a soft brake pedal. How about that 41, Matt? He is having an awesome day, Bill. Three laps ago, worked his way into the top ten and slowly worked his way past driver eight. The car was much tighter in the first run than it was yesterday. He pulled a spring rubber out of the left rear back on lap 19, and the car has really come to life, Alan. There are your top 10 of 31 cars that are on the lead lap as we approach the one-quarter mark of today's race. Matt Kenseth still being stalked by Ryan Newman for the race lead. Let's continue to go through the field. 11th place, Greg Biffle, and Matt has that story. Biffle won here in June in a Bush Series race. Best finish here at Cup 7. He just got knocked out of the top 10. The car still too tight on late exit, Marty. Matt, about 10 laps ago, Jeff Gordon came on the radio and said, guys, we are the complete opposite of what it's been all day long. He restarted 10th, has now backpedaled to 12th, came on the radio and said, quote, I don't know what to tell you guys, Dave. Elliot Sadler has lost five positions since the restart. They tried to fix a loose end and through the middle condition, but they made the off the corner bad. He rated left 75, sliding the nose real bad, Matt. Mark Martin started the afternoon seventh in the championship point standings. He runs 14th on the racetrack. The car, the balance is just not what he needs, Marty. A little loose and a little tight. A great day for Sterling. Marlon Mass started 34th today. Currently, he has moved up to the 15th position. Very happy with the car. Just a little bit tight, Dave. Ricky Rudd is having a day where he really hasn't gone anywhere yet. Made a slight adjustment on the last stop. Has lost one position. He started 14th today, so he's just kind of hanging around there near the top 15, Marty. On his first stop of the day, Kevin Harvick took two tires. He said that didn't work. They came down this time on lap 49. Nine, took on four tires. Far much better now. It's a little bit tight. Matt. Tony Stewart's worked his way from 24th where he restarted. Now he's up to 18th. Crucci Briggs and Fidelli did not want to over adjust on that race car due to the cosmetic damage to the fender. They didn't want to know really how much it was tight, so they just did a slight track bar adjustment. Meanwhile, the guy who's been flying coast to coast, Paul Edwards in the 99 car, having a very impressive top 20 run. The car's a tick tight day for the middle of the corner. And racing Carl Edwards very hard for the last few laps has been Scott Riggs. Has not radioed into his crew in a long time. The last run they were very tight, so they made a wedge and track bar adjustment and allowed him to work on trying to get around the 99. Hasn't been able to do that. The 18th of Bobby Labonte restarted 21st. Well, guess what? He's just about in that position right now. They had a loose, a loose car. They uh, put a spring rubber in the right rear, made a track bar adjustment to try to help Bobby. Not yet, Bill. Jeff Green in the 43 car trying to get Petty Enterprises. Another good, strong run here at Dover. They've been looking for that for a while, but not working out so far for Jeff. Back in the 22nd position. As for Michael Waldrop, been sliding backwards, had that good starting spot, but now working the wrong way in the field. They told him on the radio, look at the high groove. Some of the guys that are making progress are running in the high groove. So there's back through 23rd place in our through the field. Up front, no change among the top two. Kenseth and Newman still being stalked there. Hey, but the, that yellow and black car can be putting a lot of cars down. The pace he's going right now. By the way, unscheduled pit stop for Joe Nemechek. A minute ago under the green flag. He has gone back onto the racetrack and has gone a couple laps down in 34th place. Also, Ward Burton's car is behind the wall. Matt? Alan, you guys commented earlier in the show about how well Matt Kenton qualified. Well, if you look at his wins, though, all nine wins have taken place from 17th through 31 on the grid. He told his team earlier in the race, and he rarely says this, the car is pretty decent. So that tells you, much like Mark Martin, when he gave you a little bit of optimism, that tells you a lot, Bill. Well, Matt, here's the trivia question for the booth today. What did Ryan Newman lose yesterday in happy hour practice? side mirror I don't need that I'll just go around him on the outside now I can see him out my rear view mirror in the front of the car 12 to the lead and Wally they have officially got the outside line working yeah. well now as you see Rusty peeking up there and there's a lot of cars down starting to use it they pit it at lap 49 so Matt able to hold Brian off for 40 laps and now on Matt Kenseth starting to slide back, and he's going to lose second spot here to Rusty Wallace. You know, Joe Nemechek is back in. I'm sure getting some water. Marty? 
Yeah, we called it. It was uh, not the water, though, Wally. It's the oil temperature that's gone bad. 290. That doesn't work too well for oil. They pulled a piece of tape off. He went out, ran a few laps. Now he said the motor is starting to die. They came down pit road, going to see what they can do. But they'll limp it home this afternoon for the 01 bunch. That's because the damage right there in the front is interfering with the airflow going to the cooler, right? That is correct, Wally. Yeah. So troubles there for Jeremy Machek, and he is losing laps sitting on pit road getting repairs. Ryan Newman out in front here in Dover as we approach the 100 mile mark. He leads. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Since then, this racetrack has grown to where it now has some 140,000 seats and hosts two NASCAR Next L Cup Series races a year that bring this town's population far above its normal 32,000. Ryan Newman, the race leader, just passed the one-quarter mark of today's race. Rusty Wallace, his teammate, is stalking him in second place. Matt Kenseth, Jeremy Mayfield, Dale Jarrett rounding out the top five drivers. Singular Wireless Race Talk Poll. What are we going to talk about today? Well, after last weekend, Jeremy Mayfield, Tony Stewart, and Ryan Newman having their troubles at New Hampshire. Can they come back and win the title? What do you think? They're out of it? They can make it up? Or they need some help from some of the other drivers in order to have a shot? Cast your vote. We'll get your opinions a little bit later on. Okay. Got mine. Bobby Gordon in the singular car, overtaken by the leaders just a little bit ago. He is a lap down. And uh, obviously struggling with the handling on that car. Speaking of struggling with the handling, leaders have caught Michael Waltrip and put him a lap down. Yeah, Michael Waltrip, 23rd spot right there. Started fifth today, so they not going to Mikey's liking. Now for third place. And Matt Kenseth, as well as he was running in the 17 car, once a 12 and two of uh, Newman and Walsh got by. It looks like he's starting to slow down. I don't know if he has a problem or Matt, what's going on with the 17? He, he, he told Rodney Rizer the car is really awesome, but only for about 10 laps. Then it goes way too tight. Rodney's already thinking about a track bar adjustment on their next stop. Okay, I hope he's got one left. A track bar adjustment I'm talking about. So Kenseth falls back to fourth place after leading 58 of the opening 107 laps of this race. And Matt just talked about making a track bar adjustment, and that is a favorite adjustment of these crew chiefs on driver. Let's go inside our Home Depot virtual garage and show you what we're talking about. Track bar is in the rear of the car. It's what keeps the body centered on the tires. And there we see the bolt that goes right. That will go down with the bolt. You turn it to the left. That will loosen the car up. As you go down, it tightens it up. We'll turn the bolt to the right. We see it goes down. That's making the car tighter off the corner. Reverse of that is loose. But the way they're setting up these cars now, the mount on the right side of the frame rail doesn't have any adjustment left. They're Most of these cars are all the way down as far as it'll go. Yep. Oh, 41. We're having trouble. Casey Mears on the apron of the racetrack. Oh, oh that's man. tough. He was running in eighth place at the time. Matt. Came on the radio, so I think I have a right front tire going down. He's on his way down pit road. Jimmy Ellis and the guys waiting. To see. You can definitely see that tire is down on the right front. Jimmy Ellis showed me that so much confidence coming into this event. They were finally back on some racetracks where Casey was well. Tracks that are a mile or bigger. Really, any track. Uh oh. Now they've got issues. tires put it in gear and I went no wait we're gonna change the ball and put fuel in it I think that was the last second call there because the guy the front tire changer ran around the car and stepped back from it and then jumped in and started popping those lugs off the, uh, the left front so from eighth place Casey Mears falls back to at least 30 second after the flat right front Ryan Newman the leader you're watching NASCAR on TNT and of the drivers contending for the next L Cup championship are running in the top 17 positions in the race. Newman trying to make up the ground lost with that late engine failure at New Hampshire one week ago. His teammate Rusty Wallace has fallen two seconds behind him in second place. And that oh, can't oh, look out! Oh, oh man. no! We talk, talked about a BP. Man, 
it's so hard to go from 135 to 35 miles per hour and just lost control and slid into the tire barriers. This is the most difficult pit lane to get on from the racetrack because you don't ever have a straight shot and you're coming off the banking, you're getting onto that asphalt, it's very slippery down there with rubber and, and speedy dry, and you're turning and trying to slow down, and that's what happens sometimes. And he's getting out of the car. He has his gloves off. He's taking his helmet off. And that oh, car's he, he done. hard, yeah. Matty? Allen, he said he thought he had a right front tire going down. Robbie Riser just cannot believe their misfortune here today. Oh, that is so tough. You watch here as he comes down. You're coming off the racetrack, and you're trying to hustle the car on pit lane, and you get on that flat, and it's real slippery right there. See all the marbles and the dirt and the rubber? When you hit that with a hot set of tires, it's like hitting ice. Oh, and on those tires full of water, that's quite an impact. Yes, it is. Does he have to get... He has to get on the underside of those cones as well. And you talk about stopping. I mean, he went from 35, 40 miles per hour to zero. And we see the 48 guys rushing over to make sure that Matt is okay. But understand the reason those tires are there are to protect the people in those last few pit stalls. Well, exactly. And see, he's trying to turn underneath the cones. The commitment cones are over there on his right when he's turning down, and he really had to turn left to try to get in between those cones, and that even made it worse. Well, Matt Kenseth's motto for these last 10 races was no mistakes racing, and he will be probably pretty distraught over that that has torn up his race car and put a crimp in his championship bid. Severe damage to Kenseth's 17 car, crashing trying to get to pit road under the green flag at lap 119. When you come off the racetrack onto the apron, NASCAR is trying to help you by putting marks on pit road. We see there's a mark that says two. Up here is a mark that's three. It's three, two, one. And here is the commitment line that Wally talked about where you've got to be inside the cones. But Matt Kenneth entered somewhere in here. He was up already past two. Sorry, BP, I think your telestrator has uh, frozen yeah, up on you there. Yeah, oh. we're not we're not saying it, but let's uh, check down with Marty. Well, here's the other subset of what happened, Alan. He wrecked and nearly came into Jimmy Johnson's pit, but all this water you see is in Jimmy Johnson's pit, so the 48 car will have to come through all of this because he has the last stall on pit road when they do pit, and they are going to pit when they finally get all this cleaned up and they open up pit road. So, caution flag is out for the third time in this race. One of the contenders for the next L Cup championship has had an accident trying to get on to Dover's pit road. I just wrecked again in the pits, so I'd be real bad as junk. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what happened to the right front. I think just uh, one cop came in and turned around. The, sorry, guys, it's a little thing. And uh, Matt Kenseth now from the infield care center. I, I feel really bad for you. Fortunes can change very quickly, can't they, Matt? Yeah, I mean, that definitely, uh, I feel a list of the dumbest thing ever did in a race car. It definitely tops that, but that's, uh, that's a shame. We were too tight, and, um, you know, I thought we heard a right front tire, and we were talking about whether to pit or not to pit, and, um, you know, I was out on the track, and, and kind of the last minute I decided to pit, and I was on the brakes plenty early, and when I got an apron, it was real, uh, real sandy, and I should have known next. That other car blew up, and it was still pretty slick down there. Nobody's pit under green yet, and it just, uh, I just, I just lost control of it and wouldn't stop. He said on the radio, I just lost the whole thing. In, in terms of the championship perspective, you do have eight races to recover, Matt. Well, I was thinking about the race. I mean, we were uh, we had a good enough car to win the race, but just got too tight that run. We were just waiting to pit, and uh, you know, I was uh, more worried about today than I am tomorrow. We talked about it in countdown card, uh, discover card countdown to green. This is a, such a hard pit road to get into. Matt Kenseth making a mistake today. Yes, it is. I mean, when you go from 135 to 35 and try to lose 100 miles per hour, but every time that every foot that you slow down is the time that you're losing. You're and, to, and it, but another problem is, though, you know, even even at that, when you come down and you think you have it under control, you hit that apron, you have all that garbage on the apron. And I'm telling you what, on one of these race cars, when you hit the marbles, like Ryan Vickers did the 25 car, or you or you come down on the pit lane and hit that dirt, speedy dry, and all that rubber, you lose control. I mean, the cars start to slide, and you'll see it'll turn a little bit more to the left to try to get inside the cones, 
and that's it. It'll snap around on you so fast, and there's nothing you can do because it's very slippery down there. At the very top of the show today, we showed you Tony Stewart doing the same thing, except Tony realized he couldn't make it. He turned back on the racetrack. Now, the red flag is out because they have to replace that tire barrier. It's there for a reason, to protect the crews in those first few pits on the pit lane. Uh, while they're out making stops and cars are coming by under green flag conditions. So the repair is underway and we'll be back to Dover. After a 12-minute red flag to replace the safety barrier at the end of the road. Green flag, green flag. Ryan Newman brings him back up to speed. In case the mirrors the target car on the inside, four laps down. Jimmy Johnson in second spot immediately goes to the high side. Oh, they're going to run Rusty Wallace yeah. get off a of turn two. And he's looking. He's there. Second place. Almost there. Is that like almost live? That's... <laughs> he's, okay, he's there. <laughs> so Penske Power showing the way here at Dover today as the Penske Racing South teammates Newman and Wallace run first and second. Now here comes last week's winner, Kurt Busch. He tries to drive to the inside of the 48 car, can't get it done. Matt Kenseth's car, sorry, Walt, Matt Kenseth's car in the garage. The crew having a look at what repairs need to be made and trying to get it done now that the red flag is withdrawn so they can try and him, get him back on track as quickly as possible. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. Going by the lap car of Casey Mears, you saw that blue flag on the flag stand the last time by, and that was to signify that Casey Mears, look, you have a faster car behind you. It would be nice if you move over and let him go by. Especially since you're four laps down. Uh-huh. But and, and that's exactly what it means. It would be nice if you would. It's not you have to. It's uh, it's kind of a courtesy flag. In NASCAR lingo, it's called the move over flag. Dale Earnhardt Jr. running in fifth position. He started the race in 16th. Earnhardt Jr. with three top three finishes in the last four weeks. Second place, according according to him together. Jimmy Johnson may just had some marbles or something on his tires here for a lap or two because he looks like he's right back in the groove. And we're going to get back in the gas and drive up on the back of the two and had to back off to keep running in the back of Rusty Wallace. Second place. Let's see. Uh, it looks oh. like it looks like Jimmy's car is better in turns three and four. So we'll see if he can do it down here, Marty. Yeah, Wally. They have always had uh, this car, especially for Jimmy. He's always started loose, and he gets tied to the longer they run. So it takes a little while for the 48 car to come in, if you will. But it does get better the longer he runs. Better, especially at the end of the run. Bill. today not that rusty ever needs that currently in a battle with that 48 for the second position but last night his son steven at bristol in tennessee raced his great way into the feature and won a 150 lap feature at bristol one month after he was hurt in a crash over there so steven Wallace went to the green lane last night with his mom and his sister and his grandparents there rusty trying to follow with his son's Rusty looking for his second win of 2004 and what would be his fourth win here at Dover if he can go to victory lane today. Rusty like diamonding the corners down there. Everybody else is kind of stay low. You see Rusty's car drift up to the center and then when it stops drifting, he pulls it back down, but it looks like it's working for him. And the reason that is, Wally, is because he said in the corners he drifts up in the middle, that's where he gets the grip. Then he gets back in the gas and goes. So we found that working the early laps here. Yeah, it's definitely working for him right now because Jimmy Johnson looked like was going to get by him pretty simple, pretty easy, but Rusty's putting a little bit of ground in between him and the 48 car Jimmy Johnson right now. Asked you earlier about our uh, single wireless race talk poll if the guys who had troubles in New Hampshire last week had enough time to get back in it. Mayfield, Stewart, Newman. Most of you think they need, well, it's about split, isn't it? It's split between can, they can make it up and need help. And see, need help. I, I think that's the right answer because Matt Kenson just helped all those three guys get right back in. Yep. The question is, with 10 guys in the championship, will all 10 have you need a, lot of help. a race where they have problems? <laughs> right. 
How about the update on McKenzie Farm, Matt? Uh, excuse me, that's Dave, isn't it? Yeah, just because we were over in this area, Alan, we picked up the story here. It's not going to be pretty when it goes back on the track, but it will go back on the track. They're getting the radiator replaced right now. That's the last major thing that they need to do here. Matt is standing by by his car, and they will have this car back on the racetrack soon. Every point counts, and if they can get the car back out on track and make some laps and some other people fall out of the race, they could gain a dozen, maybe as many as 20 points in the remainder of this event. Don't forget that or the 17 car crash we showed you in the opening of the broadcast. That didn't happen until there were just over 50 laps to go in the race in June. Got to keep fighting. Oh, 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 the 48 car had a moment coming off turn two. He got a little bit loose. And, and look at this Casey Mears, this car four left end. He is really fast. He had a moment, Johnson did, and almost got run over. Yeah, by Kurt, Kurt Bush. Kurt Bush had a moment there, too. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I think Casey Mears could have passed Bush, but he, he realizes these guys are racing. He's not on their lap, so he's just giving them enough room to do that. And they're racing for a championship. Right. As you see, what? Kurt Busch putting a lot of pressure on Jimmy Johnson. And he's actually getting the 48 car loose by driving right on his bumper and taking the air off that rear spoiler. I think Jimmy Johnson eventually is just going to say, go, yeah, get right. off my bumper. He does not like that feeling. No driver likes that feeling, having someone right behind you in your car. Every time you turn the steering wheel to the left, trying to spin out that field, it's going to spin out. So finally you say, look, go ahead. Don't be on my rear bumper like that. So Kurt Busch to third in the 97. Jimmy Johnson sliding around in fourth. Then the lap car of Casey Mears before you get back to fifth place, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I think Jimmy Johnson would like to let the 41 go, but then he's got to worry about Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Dale Jarrett coming to get by him as well. Hey, just a, a thought here while we're watching Casey Mears racing around these guys that are racing for the championship. What happened last weekend in New Hampshire when a guy, a couple of guys messing around that were not in the championship impacted the title bids of guys who are? I throw a theory out there. Something like that happening in the first ever race in the chase for the championship maybe helped raise the awareness of everybody as to what their actions on the track mean in the bigger picture and might have helped going down the road. I think it got everybody's attention and, and you know, no, Robbie's taken a lot of flat for it, which he should. But um, I think he realized what a mistake he made. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you may have taken two guys out of the championship. You don't know how this thing is going to work out. but And I think that you're, I think that's true. And I think all the rest of the drivers look at that and say, look, I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to take uh, Jimmy Johnson and the 12 car, Ryan Newman. Of course, he had a problem anyway. But Dylan Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson, I don't want to be the car that ruins their chances of being the next Hill Cup champion. Jeff Gordon talked about that topic uh, with us earlier, uh, in fact, yesterday morning. Put it in a little different context. He used the word friends to talk about those relationships on the racetrack. I know one thing, you, you don't have many friends out there to begin with, but you don't want to have any less. So, um, you know, having friends uh, out there certainly can, can can benefit you, especially one of those guys running for the, the championship. It, yeah, and I think I think when he means friends, too, it, it, there's a respect. you got to show respect to each other when you're out there racing. Even if you're racing hard against a guy, you've got you've to use your head and, and use that respect that you're not going to do something that's going to take them out or, or take somebody else out. So. I mean, if in fact the 24 car is faster than you, you have to respect that position and, and don't run him in the wall just to keep him behind you. I guess, I guess the summary of my whole point is this. There was so much discussion leading into the chase for the championship about how the drivers outside the title group would mix with the guys in and we got a pretty big wake-up dose of that in that very first race, and I think that's just created a lot of awareness and got everybody thinking about it this week, and that's just going to help going forward from here. Jimmy Johnson, fourth place, now being chased by Dale Earnhardt Jr. But, Alan, let me say one more thing on this subject, and I'll shut up. It's not going to help if they are too clean with it. If we don't have serious racing and competition, if we're just riding around the racetrack, that's no good either. I'll buy that. Rusty Wallace with a little different perspective on 
that uh, same topic. Rusty, one of those who's not in the chase. He says he's mindful of those who are, but... I'm going to be respectful of those guys, no doubt about that. Uh, but I'm going to try to pass them and outrun them in a clean, normally orderly fashion like I try to do every single week. And that's the way he should do. That's, that's exactly right. what he should do. You got to race hard, but there's, you know, you can't cross the line. And Robbie crossed the line last week. And for Rusty Wallace, not in the championship chase. What's in it for him? These final now nine races wins. It's what he wants. He's doing a good job pursuing one today in second place behind his teammate Ryan Newman after 151 laps complete, working lap 152. And the score monitor last time said Rusty Wallace was faster than Ryan Newman. So story of the day so far, Matt Kenseth, one of the championship contenders in an accident trying to get to pit road while Ryan Newman tries to make up lost ground from a week ago. Race tickets and all of NASCAR. The seats are filled and they're getting their money's worth here. Ryan Newman currently leading here. Take a look at the championship standings as they race now. Race number two, the 10 race chase for the next Hell Cup. Kurt Busch with a 10 point lead over Dale Earnhardt Jr. And it's Gordon Johnson and Elliott Sadler in the top five. Mark Martin would move up the spot. Matt Kenseth in the garage. His car being worked on. In fact, to Tony Stewart currently in 10th, 171. That's as, that's as they run now in the NASCAR chase for the next Hell Cup. Let's take you through the field and let's start with Ryan Newman and that means I get to go first and that car is just getting better as the race goes along it's actually just a tick and clean, just a little too loose but this track should tighten up as they go along the two car of Rusty Wallace Rusty Wallace called crew chief Larry Carter this morning they talked about using a free or setup in the car when Rusty called Carter he said don't do it let's stick with what we got that's very close to what they ran here in June working out fine so far about the 97 day well, Bill, in the last one, his car tightened up over a long run, so they made a wedge and an air pressure adjustment. He's radioed in a couple of times. He said at one time the car was worse on exit, and then he said we were really free by ourselves. I don't think it's a bad condition. He's just monitoring as best he can for his team. Marty? Dave, Jimmy Johnson has won two of his five Dover races. Came on the radio right when this ran run began. Said, I can't really hustle it like I'd like. Feels weird to me. Still a little too loose for Johnson, but the times are getting better, Bill. Very quiet. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight car. He's trying to give DEI an engine sweep this weekend. He's trying to win here. Martin Truex Jr. won the Bush race yesterday, and they also won the truck race in Las Vegas with Shane Neal providing them with DEI power. Earnhardt Jr. trying to make it three for three. Dale Jarrett's crew chief, Mike Ford, was very confident about their car when I talked to him during the red flag. Just two small air pressure adjustments all day. DJ maintaining the sixth position. Jeremy Mayfield is not maintaining. He's moving forward. Three spots since the green flag came out. The chassis is still good, and he's been quiet on the radio as he's been picking up spots. Marty? Dave, third place fan the championship. Jeff Gordon came in. Nine points out. You already saw the graphic a moment ago. He's lost some points today. He told us earlier. We told you earlier. I don't know what tell you guys it hasn't gotten much better. Sad. Uh, I'm so out the lunch, it's not even funny. I mean, I'm, I'm just turning around here like I'm on the highway. It's the thing is just, you know, I don't know what to say. He said the worst part is it just doesn't do the same thing every lap. Very inconsistent so far for the 24. Matty? Mark Martin runs in the ninth position, still digging, trying to sweep Dover in 2004. They made a significant air pressure adjustment on his last stop to try to free up this race car. Also gave him a set of scuffed tires, a set of tires where they've had a few laps on him to work him in. Meanwhile, his teammate, Greg Bipple, rounding out the top ten. They've had some issues with the radio. They fixed that. Now they're trying to fix the race car. The right front corner, his spotter tells him it's a okay. Top 10 day so far for Greg Biffle, a okay for Ryan Newman with an exclamation point. He has led the most laps today 107 of 167 that have been run in this race. We continue going through the field with 11th place Ricky Rudd, Dave. His car was tied in the last run, Alan, so they made an air pressure adjustment when he came into the pitch. It seems to have helped him speed wise, but he hasn't been able to pick up any spots on the track. 38 of Elliott Sadler, when they restarted, they were 13th. He has now moved just one position up to 12th. His car is now loose in, tight through the center and off the corner, according to the driver. Marty? 
Okay, the last time Sterling Marlin ran this particular race car, finished seventh at Chicago. The teammate Jamie Murray pressures him from behind. Looks like it could be another top ten for the 40 bunch. Just a little bit tight. Very happy with the race car, Bill. Marty, the 42 of Jamie McMurray was tight off the turns and loose everywhere else before the car. How's he been since then? Don't know. Radio problem with the radio in the car. The crew cannot hear Jamie. No trouble. Jeff Burton, turn three. Probably a right front BP, maybe. Boy, it looks like it looks the way the way the entry of the car and, and the way he hit the wall. That's uh, signs of a right front tire going down. And that's the fuel pump that is broken and there's gasoline sprayed back on the exhaust system. And that's the fire that you see. But most of that is on the outside, not inside the cockpit with Jeff Burton. Kim, his wife, on the top of the toolbox said, Jeff, get out of there. And you see Jeff is taking off the safety equipment and he's, yeah, he's he, it, believe me, it, it would have been real hot inside that car. He would have been getting out a lot quicker. That's a heavy, heavy blow. Yeah, a little upset. So caution number four out in this uh, race at Dover and Jeff Burton. Tough day, a lap penalty earlier for pitting outside his box. And now a pretty heavy crash in turn number three. There you see him coming right down all by himself. You can hear the tire blow. You can, you can hear the tire explode. Oh. And the car just straight into the wall with that right front. Boy, that was ugly. Understand Jeff being mad, but glad he's out of the car and okay. But uh, the day is done for Jeff Burton after a heavy crash. Pit road open for the leaders. They'll come to the pit road at lap 171. Ryan Newman, Rusty Wallace, Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the top five coming in. Marty? Jimmy Johnson running four, so the car was just too loose at the beginning of the run. I want a windshield tear off. They're going to put a round of wedge in to try and fix the loose condition. A pound in the right rear tire trying to fix the tight condition at the end of the run. Weber? The two of Rusty Wallace and the 12 of Ryan Newman heading down pit road. For the two, just a tick tight in the center, but they decided to make no changes. For the 12 of Ryan Newman, the race leader, you can see the chassis adjustment being made. That's because, as we told you through the field, they were just a little bit loose. They're not going to wait for the track to come to them, Dave. Kurt Busch, bottom of your screen in the 97. Wedge adjustment, warm tires, air pressure adjustment, trying to correct the handling on that car for Kurt. Race off pit road, guys. Matt, a great job by Mark Martin's pit crew beating both Jeff Gordon and T make Greg Biffle off pit road. Now, Mark Martin actually called off an air pressure adjustment to the right front after he saw that Jeff Burton had hit the wall. He quotes, he, I, and I quote, maybe we should just try to finish this race instead of trying to win it. They're going to try to save a set of scuff tires for their final run. And Matt, a, a lot of the guys will watch this race off of pit road and see that Ryan Newman, the leader, maintains the lead. <laughs> Rusty Whoa, was that's a draft in there. Oh, was, wasn't <laughs> that was kind of a bump draft on pit yeah. road. You were saying, BP. A lot of the teams this morning are very concerned about the tires, each set of tires being inconsistent. You know, those guys celebrating with a great pit stop, but sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're tight. They talked about maybe they ought to scuff all their tires to try to sort the tires out and see which one, which set of tires goes to one direction or the other. And, and I think what Mark was talking about, the air, the tire adjustment is puts more air pressure in that tire because normally when you start them out low, that's when you start running into trouble. Now, just out of the garage, Matt Kenseth. Remember that he's got one chance to make sure his car's up to the minimum speed so he doesn't end up having to park like Tony Stewart did at New Hampshire last week. Kenseth, 53. We had gotten, the car wasn't as good as that, that run as it was a run before, and uh, we had made an adjustment, and I thought it was just the adjustment, and we'd gotten not terribly slow, but we were a little slower than we needed to be, and uh, that was the only indication there was a problem. But if you slowed down every time you got slower than you wanted to be, you'd, you'd have to spend half the time in the pit. So uh, we didn't have too much camera. We must have run over something and had a slow leak or something because uh, Goodyear builds awesome tires, and uh, I hate it. We got behind early. We, we pitted out of the box, and uh, that was cool. We got penalized, but NASCAR penalized us and put us a lap down when the field was coming around, and we were essentially two laps down. 
That wasn't right. We, they, we deserved a penalty, but we didn't deserve to be penalized when they penalized us. That was a huge costly, uh, that was a huge problem for us because the way they penalized us was wrong. They should have penalized us, but they shouldn't have penalized us when they did, and that put us where we never could get our lap back. We had a seventh, eighth place car, but it would have been impossible to get our lap back because of the way they imposed the penalty. And another big penalty right now, Alan, I believe Jimmy Johnson has a penalty as well. Johnson has come down pit road. He was caught speeding, exiting the pits on the set of pit stops before. And we talked about what an advantage that was being the first pit off turn four, but one of the disadvantages, you've got to drive all the way down pit road seeing cars start to pull out in front of you. And it's hard to keep that right foot <laughs> steady when you see guys pulling out of the pits because you want to beat them. So Jimmy Johnson will give up fourth place and go all the way back to 19th for the restart. Now watch the camera again on the race off pit road. Watch Rusty Wallace pushing Ryan Newman here. You know, they, they could be, uh, I'm trying to look in the back of the 12 car, but it just depends on how they have the bumpers or the bars in the back of the 12 car. If they're pointed, reason re being, Pete, the folks haven't seen this yet, Wallace, we saw this during commercial, right. damage on the nose of Rusty Wallace's car. We were wondering if he did it there. And if they're if they're pointed and, they're, and there's some bars back there that maybe he leaned on, put that hole in it. Now, what kind of effect is that hole where the left front headlight go is going to be. That's going to have some effect. It's going to probably make the car push. Bill? They got that. Uh, I'm in their pit now. They say they got that from the 97 car on the way out of pit road. Okay. They just run into them? Uh, I believe uh, they came together. Whom ran into whom, or whatever the correct grammar is. Somebody hit the other guy. Gotcha. So they were racing for second place coming off pit road, and... Back to what you said at the top of the broadcast, BP. Second time today, we've seen contact on pit road put a wrinkle in somebody's chances. Didn't see any damage on that 97 car, but... Anyway, that's probably going to make Rusty's car push a little bit, I would think. It's certainly not going to help the situation, I'll tell you that. And it's also cracked. Not only do we have a hole there underneath the headlight, there's, it's cracked all the way across there. That air is going to be getting inside of there, maybe creating some lift as well as that hole you've taken away, you know, piece of the nose that's going to create downforce. So it's, uh, you're going to have less downforce on the front of that car. Here we go to the green flag. Newman, Wallace, Bush, Jarrett, Martin. Green flag, top five. Green flag. And again, Jimmy Johnson back in 19th place for this restart. Uh, uh, Rusty's gonna try it out right away, see? Yeah, he wants that lead. Whoa, three wide behind him. That's gonna be interesting. Mark Martin went around the outside of both Michael Waltrip and Casey Mears. And for second place, Kurt Busch, 97. Gonna take the spot from Rusty. And there we see Mark Martin going by that time by. He was in the fifth position, that sixth car. And just before that last caution flag, he was coming on strong, Mark Martin. Won the race here at Dover in June. Led only the final 19 laps. He hasn't led yet today. But knowing what I just said a second ago, Martin fans should not worry. There's plenty of time. In fact, we're not even halfway. It's a shame that Casey Mears had those tire problems. You know, that 41 car, it's really fast. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it looks like Rusty is sliding back a little bit, so I'd be real anxious to see. And there's the 48 way back there. Where? I haven't seen him yet. I okay. think he's right. There he is. There. Right behind Carl Edwards at 99. That would be what you call lost track position. Mm. Marty? And a lot of ground to make up for Jimmy Johnson. Currently, he's made up one spot. He's in 18th, but he's got a long way to go to get to the front track. And now, smartly, though, when they came down pit road to serve the penalty, did take out the spring rubber from the left rear that he wanted to. That should loosen the car up. Also, two rounds up on the left rear wedge bolt. That should loosen it up as well. And one round in the right rear. A lot of adjustments when they did serve the penalty. A smart move on Chad Canals' part. 97 car, Kurt Busch has given some put some pressure on that 12 car at Newman. He's all over the back of that car. And let me just clarify one thing. The penalty for Jimmy Johnson would have just been to go to the tail end of the longest line. He did not have to come down pit road 
to do that. They chose to take advantage of the fact that they were going to give up all the track position anyway to make those adjustments Marty just talked about. And once again, as Marty just said, Chad Knauss, a winning crew chief for those reasons. Watch this. Trying to get Newman loose. Kurt Busch has not yet led today. Trying to collect five bonus points toward the championship. You get those if you lead a lap, any lap, during the course of a race. And we see a lot of drivers that get in the situation that Ryan Newman is in in the 12 car. The 97 comes up, starts pressing him. He just moves over and lets him go by. Ryan Newman is wow. not, not that type of driver. He races every lap these guys are. Now, he had no, nothing he could do there except just move over and let the 97 go by. But he did, really does race hard. So, new leader, Kurt Busch, out in front. Driver who's never had a lot of success here at Dover. Kurt has talked about this pretty freely this weekend. They've always run well in the first part of races here, but had trouble finishing it off. Well, he's running well in the first part of the race today. they still got half the race to try and finish it off. Jimmy Finney, the crew chief on the 97, kept insisting that Richmond, he kept telling us we're going to run wide open in Richmond. We're going to run wide open the next 10 races, and looks like he's true to his word. Dave Burns. And Alan, I want to go back to what I was talking about before they pitted or during their pit stop. The myriad of information, the, the amount of information that Kurt gave crew chief Jimmy Fenning and the way they talked through it. Kurt's car was doing one thing in traffic, doing another thing by itself, and he's got the car adjusted now with the help of his crew where it could run for the lead. What a difference 2000 Four versus 2003 for Kurt Busch. You remember all the turmoil and trouble that the young man went through in the, this, this part of last season after the August run-in with Jimmy Spencer and the fan fallout that came from behind it. I see in Kurt Busch, uh, just purely my opinion, but I see a young man really maturing as a big league racing driver, not riding the emotional roller coaster so much with the goods and the bads, really leveling it all out like for example, Mark Martin, who's done that so well over the years. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Kurt, I mean, like him or not like him, I know he, he gets a hard time from the fans, but I'll tell you what, the guy wheels a race car. He drives hard, and uh, you, he's going to be a threat to the championship. As they say in the garage area, he is a wheel man. So Kurt Busch now the fourth different driver to lead the MBNA America 400 at Dover International Speedway as we close in on the midway point of this race. The 26-year-old from Las Vegas, Nevada, seeking his 12th good race for the lead here at Dover. As we come up on halfway, Kurt Busch trying to hold off Ryan Newman. Oh, he slid up the racetrack <laughs> and he tried to get back down. The car got a little bit loose, but Kurt Busch held on. They want that 12 car, Ryan Newman, goes to the middle of the corner right there. And it's over so now. well. Mm. So after Kurt led 12 laps, make that 11 laps, Ryan Newman's going to go back out in front and reclaim the top spot. Newman, the dominant driver on the day so far. This is back for ninth and 10th places. Greg Biffle and Jeremy Mayfield. Mayfield in the 19 going to move forward. Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 was the won the pole position here on qualifying Friday afternoon. Mayfield losing 102 points after the last 65 record New Hampshire a Sunday ago that forced him to finish 35th in that race. BP talking about him starting on pole here in uh, the June race. He finished eighth, starting from pole. Closing in. Meanwhile, we check our little Debbie lap leaders. Ryan Newman back out in front. And he has been the man so far today. Matt Kenseth back out on track after that uh, crash. He got 119 where he ran into the pit barrier. Tried to get onto pit road under the green flag. But besides Kenseth, it's been all Ryan Newman. Only other leader today, Ken Schrader, for one lap. With well, that lap there. Ryan Newman. Once he got in clean air, he was a lot faster than anybody else. So once he got past Kurt Busch, three tenths of a second faster. Matt Kenseth back on track. There are the numbers on Matt. 53 laps down in 33rd place. Shuffling him down to seventh in the championship. Jeff Burton's out. So in another 20 laps, Matt will overtake Jeff Burton. That's three more points toward the championship. And then we'll see what happens in the second half of the race. Did a good job on that car. I mean, that thing was a mess. 
That's 11 plays changing hands. Elliot Sadler slipping back in the 38. And McMurray in the 42 picking up a spot. I heard uh, it was Dave reported earlier. No, it was uh, Bill that reported earlier that uh, McMurray wasn't feeling very well. Hadn't heard anything more on that in the last uh, little bit. And Jimmy Johnson trying to dig out of the hole. 48, Jimmy Johnson just passed the 20 car of Tony Stewart a couple of minutes ago. How's Tony Carr looking, man? BP into that contact earlier in the race with Robbie Gordon, Tommy Dean, the tire trainer, tried to fix that right front fender, but Tony has been fighting an arrow problem ever since. By himself, the car's loose. In traffic or when cars are around him, the car is tight. Trying to keep light of the situation and provide some humor. In fact, after the last stop with Scott Gertz, dumped some water accidentally inside the cockpit. He said, next time, Gertz is going to hold the pit board sign, I promise not to run over you, Marty. Well, Matt, as BP would say, the 48 starting to go somewhere. Start, we started 19th that we talked about up to the 13th position right now. The car is starting to come in for Jimmy Ashley in 14th. He said uh, it's a little getting better for him right now. They came on the radio said, if anyone can get the job done from the back to the front, you're the man for the job. So that's the story on Jimmy Johnson. Now, what about Dale Jarrett? What a solid drive for this team. As poorly as they've struggled, as much as they've struggled and poorly as they've run the last two weeks, Dale Jarrett up to fourth place. Starting to feel a little bit of heat from Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. I talked to Eddie DeHunt, the general manager of Robert Yates Racing this morning. He fell out both the 88 and 38 would run well today. And they have. I don't think they're the match of the 12 or two or some of those guys, but they got lots of time to still adjust on it, though. Yes, they do. They've got 200 laps still to go. Ah, the word, the word. a lot of room, a lot of room up there, and here comes six of Mark Martin right behind him, too. Matt, go ahead. Alan, he has closed in on those guys. In fact, about 12 laps ago, he came on the radio and said to Pat Trice, said, okay, Pat, we are ready to go. He's watching the 8 and the 88 battle side by side, Bill. Matt, the eight car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. just a little bit tight right now. It's a little too tight for Junior. He's hoping to free up the car, and that would give him a better run here in the second half of this race. So taking his time, not really a major factor yet, but certainly right there and considering points for the chase, he's in good shape, but want to make that car a little bit better in the second half of the race. So Earnhardt Jr. to fourth, Martin to fifth, Jared back to sixth. Ryan Newman putting a hurt on the field so far today here at Dover, but still 193 laps to go. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series on the track at Dover, Delaware, presented by the principal financial group, 214 laps on the board, just past the halfway mark here at the Monster. And that 12 car of Ryan Newman has been a monster ever since they dropped the green flag. Started outside the front row, he's running up front. Let's take you through the field. The only changes they've really made on that car since they got here, they made a sway bar, a slight sway bar adjustment, and a left front spring adjustment. Some minor chassis adjustments through the race. But Ryan Newman having a good run at Dover, former winner here, Dave. Kurt Busch trying to run him back down and retake that lead. He, is, uh, he radioed in just a few laps ago that his car was a little loose in the center, a little tied off. He recommends taking some air out of the left rear tire to help correct that. William? Dave, the two-car Rusty Wallace is just a little bit tight. Now, he does have that damage just where that left front headlamp would be. The crew has made basically a piece that would fit over that that they could put on during a pit stop. But it'd really be hard for them to do it, because even if they do it under yellow, they'll lose so many positions. So hopefully the car will not get too bad. Rusty will be able to handle that. We'll see how it goes, Matt. Bill, two seconds back, and Rusty Wallace is Mark Martin trying for his fifth Dover win. He said on the last one the car was good at the start, but got better and better, and then a little tight at the end. The good news for Mark Martin, he's on stickers now, but he does have scuff tires for the rest of the race, Bill. The eight car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. talked to Tony Urey Jr. this morning, the car chief on that car. He said he will be good on longer runs. Those are 50 to 70 lap runs. We'll see how Jr. does at the end of this one. So far, so good, though, Dave. On the last pit 
stop for Dale Jarrett. They made another slight air pressure adjustment for a tight race car. Since the restart, he's lost two positions, but as you guys have mentioned, having a really good day here at Dover. Marty? Not such a good day for Jeff Gordon. It has been a struggle. He just cannot get aggressive with the car at all. Starting to get super tight in the middle. That was a quote on lap 198. They have not found a balance on the 24 car today, Dave. Jeremy Mayfield's crew chief, Kenny Francis, has taken a good look at his tires, including the right front. His assessment, he radioed to Jeremy, go get him. Your tires have looked great. You can run hard. Matt? And the 16, you can see on the inside, moves by the 19 of Jeremy Mayfield. They've been working, trying to get that tightness out of that race car most of the race. A wedge and air pressure adjustment on the last stop. But pushing Doug Richard was afraid to make a change in the air pressure in the right front due to the possibility of some teams having issues today, Bill. And watching that pass in the 42 car, Jamie McMurray, his car is good, but still a little bit tight. But the car has been getting better. Took a look on, look on the inside of the 19 there. The better the car gets, the better Jamie feels, and the better Jamie feels, the better the radio works. So it's all tied to how good the car runs. Right, guys? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. A good car fixes a lot of other problems. Well, then Ryan Newman must just be feeling on top of the world right now because he has pulled away from second place by 4.7 seconds with 179 laps to go and Newman in command. Dave, let's keep going through the field. How about Ricky Rudd? First, Jeremy Mayfield, you saw him sliding back just a little bit. He said, I'm sliding the nose, so that car just a little bit tight. Ricky Rudd, his car is really loose. 21 is not doing so well right now. And the 38, well, his car is loose entering the corner. He radioed that to his crew on lap 203. Labonte on the last pit stop, the car was good enough that they didn't want to make any changes. No air pressure adjustments, no chassis adjustments. The driver saying the car is turning really well. He restarted 15. He's moved up two spots. Marty? A 14th place for Jimmy Johnson after serving the lap 174 penalty for feeding off of pit road. His car has started to plow for Jimmy as he said on lap 214. Not very good right now, Matt. Tony Stewart running 15th. He's on this about a half a straightaway lead over Carl which is in 16th. Tony not having a good day. He summed it up this way. It feels like we've got no suspension in this car. It's like it's a two by four in it, he said. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards, he's been battling a tight condition all day, but a very impressive run. Ran the truck series race last night out in Las Vegas, having a nice top 20 run this afternoon. So there are the lead lap cars, about to be one less as Ryan Newman works to go past Carl Edwards, the 16th place runner. And the other story of the day, Matt Kenseth back out on track. He's just passed Jeff Burton for 32nd place because Burton is out of the race with his crash damage. Kenseth crashing at lap 119, trying to get to pit road for a green flag stop, and he clobbered the tire barrier that protects the last pit down at the turn four end of the uh, pit lane. Well, Jeff Gordon has caught Dale Jarrett trying to take over the sixth position as DJ is now falling back just a little bit. Here comes Gordon, and... Uh, not be much of an issue. Now, Dale Jarrett's struggling right now. He's uh, where he pretty much that comes up on him. He's giving him plenty of room, so he's obviously fighting that race car. So Jeff Gordon up to comes Greg Bimple. Sixth place, Bimple to seventh, and Dale Jarrett sliding back to eighth place. Last set of pit stops for the front runners was at 171, so we're a good 40 laps away anyway from another set of pit stops and it's all Ryan Newman right now here at the Monster Mile you're watching NASCAR on TNT Dover International Speedway NASCAR on TNT the chase for the next L Cup nine races to go Ryan Newman and Jimmy Johnson with opposing fortunes at this point in the race Newman in the 12 is the leader Johnson in the 48 is about to be put a lap down he's fallen back to 15th position Marty the progress has slowed, and there's a lot of concern here on pit road about right front tires, including on the 48 car. Do this, buddy. I know you can. Make sure you're getting all the way out of the throttle. Dude, I'm doing everything I can. The right front's chattering right now. I'm afraid it's going to come apart. I mean, I'm just trying to help, dude. I know. I'm trying to do everything I can in here. And what? And Wally, what he has, he has a tight race car. And you know, if you force a tight race car down, all you do is abuse the right front. The hotter the right front gets, the more likelihood it will let go. It's exactly right. He's you know, trying to get all the way out of the throttle and, and let the car float, let it roll into the corner, not push it so hard. Because if you do push it, and talk about pushing, 
<laughs> Mark, Mark Martin's pushing Kurt Busch. He just pushed his way by Rusty Wallace in the two car to take over third, and now here's two laps later going by Kurt Busch for second. The June winner here at Dover, Mark Martin, talked so much about looking forward to this race this weekend to get his championship bid on a roll, Matt. About 8 o'clock this morning, I saw Mark Martin hunched down in front of the race car with Pat Trison discussing the changes they were going to make to the car to make it better. They felt like it was good in final practice, but Mark told me the car was too good, too fast at the beginning of a run, which meant that it would make it tighter near the end of the run. They were going to try to slow it up a little bit at the beginning so he would have the car he would need at the end of a long run and they have worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and his car is one of the fastest if not the fastest now lap after lap on the racetrack but here's the problem he's got Matt he's in second spot but he's almost nine seconds behind Ryan Newman so he's giving up way too much at the very beginning of the run how about our Miller Lite NASCAR Next Hell Cup race pack? This will be of interest to Mark Martin fans it concerns sweeping the season's races here at Dover nine times over the years and three of the last four seasons the races have been swept in a year tony stewart 2000 jimmy johnson 2002 ryan newman 2003 mark martin won here in june could it be it could be it may be it might be it certainly can be but the guy driving that 12 car might have something to say about it but a nice drive up through the field for mark martin to second like you said bp he's nine seconds behind ryan newman the race leader. And Newman is still the fastest car right now, or has been the last few laps. Ryan Newman pretty confident that, well, let's check speeds at the line first. Okay. And compare Mark's speed to Newman's. Well, Mark was fast in that lap. We'll take it all the way back through the top 10. How about that? Uh -huh. How about Jeff Gordon? Whoops. Jamie McMurray, the quickest car. Elliot Sadler, second best. Now the 12 car is going to have an extremely slow lap this time as he has to slow down to lap his teammate of Brendan gone. Brendan running back in 20th position. That'll put him two laps down to the blistering pace Ryan Newman is setting. Last Sunday in New Hampshire, Newman leading the race. When the engine went sour on his car, he finished 33rd, fell 136 points down in the chase for the next L Cup, but he was very confident coming in here this weekend he could overcome that deficit and perhaps put his hands on the big trophy. Our team has a shot at uh, running good at, if not winning, every one of these last 10 races. And we showed that it's a New Hampshire. We just had an engine uh, failure, a part of an engine fail. Uh, so we, we just, uh, you know, go into the next nine uh, with our chin up and uh, focus on what we have to do to win every every one of those. <laughs> just do what you're doing today. Fancy fast. After what he did last year in the last part of the season, nobody doubts Ryan Newman can get on a run here in these final nine races. Earnhardt Jr. on the move and Kurt Busch sliding back. Earnhardt Jr. to fourth, Kurt Busch back to fifth. He was running second, it seems like, just a few laps ago. Yeah, Busch looks like he's losing the handle on his car at this point in time of the run when he gets to this tire. What, what, what are they saying about the 97, Dave? Really, really tight, Wally, and, and Kurt's pretty frustrated. He just radioed into his crew kind of sarcastically that this is great, and he didn't mean it. Uh, Rusty Wallace. Sliding down onto pit road for a green flag stop 245. I'm thinking this is about 20 laps earlier than we might have expected to see him. That's my guess. What do you think, Bill? It's a surprise, Rusty coming down pit road, they're going around to the right side. They've been talking about how the car was just a little bit tight. They had that hole in the front left side of the grill, but that's not a problem. So they come around to the Rusty felt something that didn't feel right and felt like he better go in and change all four tires. When you see some a car turn up like Jeff Burton's 30 car was earlier and you feel something wrong, trust me, you're going to hit pit road and say, check it out, fellas. Yeah. Especially now when they see guys hitting the wall because of blown tires. Yeah. Believe me, that's in the back of their minds. That was only 75 laps from his last pit stop. So we'll see if that brings on a rash of pit stops or if everybody else holds on until the, uh, the schedule. Bill? Yeah, they just told me they thought he he thought he had a tire going down. They're looking at it right now behind the pit box. So under the green flag at 248 miles of the NBNA America 400 at Dover, Ryan Newman, the leader. Green flag stops coming up. 
Back live at Dover, you're seeing Jeremy Mayfield just leave the pit lane after a green flag stop. Little unusual circumstance getting him to pit road. Yeah, normally the crew says, Jeremy Pitt, next time we're going to change four tires, whatever. They can't, he can't hear them, so they had NASCAR tell the flagman, black flag our driver. Dave? They did that, he came in, made a wedge adjustment for a tight race car. Also, they handed him a radio through the window. Jeremy will now try to hook that in so that he can have a new radio so that everyone can hear everyone. The only time the crew could hear him the last time was when he called to complain about the radio. Go figure. What? I'll tell you what, if you can change your radio in 12 seconds with gloves on and having a Hans on with your helmet on, I gotta see how he does that. That's uh, gonna be tough. Kurt Busch continuing to slide as Jeff Gordon works in for fourth. Dave? Well, while they didn't try to change it, they handed it to him. It's up to him now to try to get in there under green. Imagine that. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. If he can do that, I want to see him do it, because that's tough. Good luck. Yeah. Here, here's the radio. Good luck. Carl Edwards has just been on and off pit road. Michael Waltrip is on pit road. Expect we might see some of these other front runners now in these next few laps. Although it could be as much as 265 to 270 before we see them if they run the fuel window out to the full extent. I'm going to check on the Gillette Young Guns today. Young Gun drivers leading the championship after 24 of the 27 races that have been run so far in 2004. We're having a pretty decent day today, except for Matt Kenseth. First micropower shaving system from Gillette. The new M3 power, the new power behind the Gillette Young Guns. I had a pocket problem one time in a road race. They handed me a squeegee. <laughs> pit stop. Matt, go ahead. Knocking on the door in the top five. Greg Biffle makes his way to pit road for a scheduled stop. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment in the right front. Doug Richard felt confident that the problems of some teams that experienced was not due to lower air pressure. He's going to try to free that race car up. His teammate, Mark Martin, running in second. His team's up on the wall waiting for him to come down pit road. At this time. Kevin Harvick leaves pit road. Ken Schrader's in, and here comes Jimmy Johnson to the attention of his crew in that first stall. Marty? Yeah, Jimmy Johnson needs some help here. He needs a caution because they are one lap down now. They're going to make two separate wedge adjustments. The car is extremely tight for Johnson. Very concerned about the right front tire during that run, as we heard. Our, uh, the left side tire is going on now for the 48. Tony Stewart says the car is up on top of the racetrack when it burns off some of the fuel. They're trying to get, they're going to try to get it back down to the racetrack but it is still tight on the drive off the corner. An air pressure adjustment, four tires for Stewart. Bill. That Ryan Newman makes the way to his pit stall. This car now just a tick tight. Remember, it vacillates between just a little loose and a little tight. Right now, a little tight. So they're going to make it. Now it's been on pit road. Monty spun trying to get to pit lane, almost spun up into traffic but kept the car down on the apron. Mark Martin was one of those coming at him. That was so close. He was backing up, backing up. I said, please, Bobby, hit the brakes. And at the last second he did, and all the cars were able to get by. Boy, if he had slid up into that speeding traffic in that bottom lane, that would have been devastating. So Ryan Newman has been on and off pit road. That gave the lead to Mark Martin. Now Mark is coming in for his stop off of turn four. So five bonus points to Mark for leading a lap. Yes, that's yep. good. Mark that down, championship Just watchers. A lot of these guys have gotten their bonus points this Do what they're going to do today. Okay, Matt. Pat Trison calls Mark to pit road, trying to capitalize on one of his better racetracks, score some points, keep himself tied in the championship chase. Four scuff tires going on. Dale Jarrett, Jamie McMurray also in. Dale Earnhardt Jr. led a lap by running a lap longer than Mark Martin. Five bonus points to Jr. And Bill, here he comes. Almost looked like he didn't see his pit sign, but he did. He slings it in there nicely. Again, this car is a little bit too tight for Jr., so they'll try and make an air pressure adjustment to help him here in the bottle. 150 laps, 140 laps of this. Good run for him here so far around to the left side. They'll send the eight car Dale Jr. Long stop on that left side. Long Green flag pit stops. Robbie Loomis told the crew we've got to have a good one here, guys. Tight end, loose off for Jeff Gordon. Down one round on the track bar. Clearly he was better at the end of that run, so they need a lot of green flag racing. Dave? Kurt Busch suggested about 20 laps ago an air pressure adjustment. He's wanted it ever since then. He also gets just a little bit of a wedge.
adjustment. The car tight for Kurt. A four-tire change, air pressure, and wedge adjustment. Trying to loosen the car up just a little bit. He leaves pit road. Uh, Jeff Gordon, by the way, did lead a lap before he pitted, so five bonus points to him. Elliott Sadler on his way off pit road after his green flag stop, Dave. 38 car of Elliott Sadler, loose into the corner, but better than it has been. What they want to do is make a track bar adjustment. That'll be the red wrench, the wrench going in the window. And uh, take on four tires of fuel as well, guys. What's that all about? What's this all know. about? The 88 car going by the 12. That would be getting back on the lead lap, is what that would be. Ah, well, you understand that, but it, we haven't seen anybody pass the 12 all day, except Kurt Busch did pass it one time, didn't he? You remember last time, what was it here? Let me just look back over my notes here for a second. Just after a restart, Kurt Busch went by, led him for a few laps, and then as the laps went on, the set of tires, Newman held more of his speed than the other guys. Yeah. So maybe he's going to need a few laps to get the steam going before he reestablishes that dominant pace he had. Could be, but it, man, it was good for Dale Jarrett. It's got to go back on the tail end of the lead lap for now. So we've got 12 cars on the lead lap at this point, and the cycle of pit stops are complete. And an anxious moment for Bobby Labonte and for Mark Martin as Labonte tried to get to pit road for his green flag stop at lap 262. Same deal, gets off the lane, jumps on the brakes, gets sideways, nails the cone, and he hits the gas as he's backing up towards the racetrack, which was the best thing he could do. We saw Matt Kenneth earlier, a green flag stop. Same deal, watch this. As he hits those tires full of water to protect the 48 pit crew or whatever pit crew would be there. Matt Kenseth losing 53 laps to repairs in the garage area. He's now in 32nd place. Ryan Newman trying to overcome his New Hampshire problem by gaining maximum points at Dover. He's led the most laps so far today. Here you go, boys. Here you go. Get the set. Get the 1985, this Dover International Speedway had just 22,000 seats. The popularity of the racing here, where it now has 140,000 in their most all sold, for today's race. Ryan Newman putting on a pretty dominating performance this afternoon, leading second place Rusty Wallace by nine and a half seconds with 123 laps to go. Okay, Wally, it's time. Time to cue the, the duck. duck. Hey, Weber. Oh, never mind. You wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Our Aflac NASCAR Nextel Cup trivia question. Who won Dover NASCAR Nextel Cup races in five different makes of cars? He shouldn't have trouble figuring this out. He's not leading, by the way. He's not leading. Who's won a lot here at Dover? Well, Ricky Rudd, Rusty Wallace. Keep going. Uh, Mark's always been in the floor. Uh, Keep going. Uh, Jeff right. Gordon. I got to help you out. It's good to be the king. Uh, uh. Richard Petty and Bobby Allison both have seven wins here at Dover. Richard did his in a Plymouth, Plymouth, a Dodge, a Dodge, a Pontiac, a Pontiac. A Ford and a Chevrolet. Uh huh. Well, that's why you wanted a Ford. I forgot about that. 46 Dover races, 16 top fives, 26 top tens. Richard Petty. The king. It's good to be the king. Here comes Marcus. Marcus Martin. Catching Rusty that two car. Rusty Wallace, by pitting before all these other cars, he was back on the racetrack with four fresh tires. He was able to gain on Mark Martin and the, actually the 12 car. But now, Mark has the advantage on tires, and we see he's caught the two car trying to take over that second spot all right so that's the race for second how about jimmy johnson he is back one lap down in 14th place and let's get an update on what's going on with him is that marty that would be me Alan. he's going to need to pass some people if he wants to get the lucky dog remember we told you he said he felt like the right front was chattering Ooh is right that is the right front inner part of jimmy johnson's tire that would not have lasted much longer had he had to stay out on the race track much longer i can't believe it. I can't believe he was driving on that thing. I mean, I, I can't believe it held up. Well, that'll get some people's attention down on pit road. So, Jimmy Johnson is back in 14th place and a lap down, trying to see if, uh, if he can pass Jeremy Mayfield, get a caution, and get the lucky dog. Never know. A lot of time to go. Still 118 laps left in this one. There's Mark Martin running third. Remember how much Mark Martin talked last week at New Hampshire about, well, we've just got to get through this race, and then we can get to Dover. And really, when you talk to all of the teams and drivers down in the garage, they all have a race or two in mind. They've just got to get through and get the best they can. And a race or two in mind 
that would be their strengths and the ones they're really drooling about getting to here in this uh, chase for the championship. Mark passed Rusty Wallace to second. This Dover race, the one he was drooling about trying to get to. Elliot Sadler is running back in seventh place. We talked with Elliot about that earlier this weekend. He talked about the races you want to get through and the ones you need to capitalize on. Uh, New Hampshire was a race that we figured we got a top 10 at the week. That was just like a win for us. Same thing we get the Talladega and Martinsville. If we can just get through there with top 10s or whatever and run all the laps, we should be fine. When we get to tracks like Charlotte, Atlanta, Kansas City, uh, we're looking for top fives. We're looking to lead in a bunch of laps and have a shot of winning a race. That's where we've been excelling at this year. So we've kind of itched those uh, tracks out to hopefully be good at. And the rest of them, you got to kind of take what they can give you. Kind of like a PGA guy playing golf. Uh, some of the pins you go for on Sunday and some of the pin plays that you don't. You go for the center of the green, get what you can get and get out of there. And that's kind of the mentality we have for the last 10 races. Well, I think one that they're all worried about deep down inside is Talladega. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the one that, uh, you know, we talked about getting caught up in somebody else's mess. Well, that can happen a lot. Uh, you knew, talking Talladega and talking Elliott Sadler, that this would probably come up then. Last year, little contact. And Elliott Sadler in the 38 car flew like a kite. Watch this. You thought it was a while before. Over and over and over. Mm. And Talladega, the real wild card race in the chase for the next L Cup. That is next Sunday. NBC with the coverage. Will the big wreck happen? If so, how many will it claim? And which of the championship contenders will it hurt the most in terms of their title hopes? 1.30 Eastern next Sunday, NBC. Talladega. Ryan Newman, well out in front of Mark Martin, but still with 112 laps to go. He didn't have his problems in the June race here till the final 100 miles were underway. This one through the middle stages being dominated by Ryan Newman. He has led so far 220 of 295 laps, and he's about nine and a half seconds ahead of the uh, second place driver, Mark Martin. Championship standings as they run on the racetrack. Kurt Busch is running in fifth position. Jeff Gordon is running fourth. Earnhardt Jr., leader coming into the day, is eighth. Most of the championship guys having pretty decent days. And Most. Mark, Mark, Mark Martin running in second position on the race. We see Jimmy Johnson now 69 points behind. And Matt Kenseth, of course, the driver is struggling on the day after the pit road accident at lap 119. Tony Stewart starting to make a move up through the field. He has just uh, passed both Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray for ninth and eighth places, respectively. And there's the race for 11th spot. Jamie McMurray having a pretty solid day at Dover, running in ninth now, and holding off Kevin Harvick for that uh, near million dollar bonus. Junior slipping a little bit, huh, Bill? Yeah, they got very happy with that car. Asked them what they did to it, and they said basically nothing. He's tied into the turns and loose off, and out on that last pit stop for them, 18.23 seconds. Yeah, that really hurt. Five or six seconds slower than the other cars. And these guys, Junior and these guys better hustle because this fellow, Ryan Newman, the 12, is coming up behind them fast. Yeah, he's gonna he's put a lot of cars to lap down right now. So you're right, you be it. I mean, obviously they're driving as hard as they can, but man, he is setting a pace. The 12 car Ryan Newman. We've taken you through the field a few times today. Let's take you inside the field and get you some stories from deeper in the pack. Matt Yoken, you're first. Carl Edwards runs in 15th. He was very impressive in the Craftsman trucks. He continues to impress here in Nextel Cup. Today marks his sixth starting cup. He debuted at Michigan with a 10. He has three top 10 finishes. Crew chief Bob Osborne told me this morning they have gelled quickly, still working on the magnitude of terminology, meaning how much the car really is tight when it's tight and how much it is loose when it's loose. Mark Martin, Kenton, and Bush all scored top 20 finishes in their debuts here at Dover. This young kid is trying to keep that streak alive, Dave. Matt, Scott Riggs couldn't wait to get back to Dover, the site of his only top five finish this year, but it hasn't gone well. I talked to crew chief Doug Randolph this morning. He said, we changed the rear end housing on this car. You don't hardly ever do that, but we were so far off, we went back to something we knew that we could handle. Unfortunately, the car has been tight all day long on that last stop. They pulled a spring rubber on the left rear, indicating still tight, and he's running several laps off the pace at this point. Bill? Dave, a few weeks ago at the California Speedway, Jimmy Spencer did something he's never done before. He wore a full face helmet in a next Hell Cup race. Spencer was the last holdout that wore an open face.
Chinese helmet. He tried it in a test that Crystal did not like it. He decided to use it in California. He was highly influenced by Ryan Newman. Spencer's shot, talked to him about it, said the full face is safer, especially, Jimmy told me this morning, in the case of fire. Spencer's son, Jimmy, runs in the Hooters Cup. Jimmy said he's always made his son wear a full face helmet. He just couldn't look at him anymore, not wearing it. So Jimmy Spencer in the full face helmet for the field ferry lost the ball. Today that Bobby Hamilton Jr. was hoping for or expected, currently running in the 31st position. But Harold Holly told me that this is their real first baseline test for 2005. This is the first Harold Holly built race car at PPI, originally built for them to go test at Kentucky with. And then when Bobby Hamilton Jr. got in the seat this year, they said, let's well, run it over, see where we're at. They're running 31st, as we mentioned, so at least they have some notes to work off of, a place to start, to start building cars for next year. Hamilton Jr. had an extended stay on pit road earlier that dropped him the elapsed behind the leader that he has fallen some 11 now to Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman setting a pretty blistering pace, but he does not have the fastest car on the racetrack at this stage of the race. That's kind of a toss up between second place Mark Martin and eighth place Tony Stewart. All of a sudden, Stewart's found some speed in that orange car, Matt. The 2002 champion and this team playing like champions today, not giving up. We told you earlier, Tony said it feels like the suspension's gone in the car. It's like it's riding on a two-by-four. They made an air pressure adjustment. He is now one of, Alan, like you mentioned, the fastest race cars on this track. Knowing that he's got to capitalize on a place like Dover, knowing his past success here of nine top fives and 11 races, his worst finish here, 11, knowing that he is deep in the points, he has got to start making his move today to keep the leaders in this championship chase in touch. One thing that they probably dropped the pressure to put some grip in this car, and also these cars are so stiff, the only way you're going to make them softer during a pit stop, really, is to let the air out. Don't think these guys, and, and that's what they do. They got to be careful about that right front. Well, that's right, because too low of air pressure will see tire troubles like we've seen with a couple of cars today. What Tony Stewart and Mark Martin and everybody else on the lead lap need right now is a caution. They need a chance to regroup and catch up to Ryan Newman and start this race fresh again. Rusty Wallace could use that yellow, huh, Bill? Sure could, Alan. Just wanted to update. They did have a chunk missing from the right front tire. Rusty called it on the radio and turned to him. made the mad dash on the pit road. They made the four tire stop. They just talked to him on the radio. He said, I'm just trying to take care of that right front tire. They said, take care of your car, bud. So Rusty sitting out of sequence, but still running the track. But he is out of sequence with the lead. He's out of sequence, Bill, but he might be able to make it on one. I think he can make it on one more stop, and all the other leaders have to stop again as well. Yeah, that could work out for him, but you never want to pit too soon here because you're afraid you're going to get caught by that that dastardly over caution, aren't you? Now that's all these cars need. That's right. Well, that brings up another whole strategy discussion, Bill, and, and Benny and Wally, is that these guys all pitted at about lap 260, lap 265. So if they took the fuel, the full 90 lap fuel run, that's going to put them somewhere up around lap 350 for a final stop. But seeing what's been going on with some of the right front tires, would you not maybe split the 140 laps and go 70 laps and 70 laps? I think a lot of them will. I don't know if they'll, they'll split it that much, but I agree. I think they'll probably play it on the safe side and come in a little bit earlier than they normally would just because they're thinking about that right front. As soon as they start feeling something wrong with the car, they're going to call the crew chief and say, okay, as soon as we get to our window, then we'll stop. Just want to make sure you don't hit, and then, as Bill said, have that dastardly Dover caution come out. It's the NBNA America 4 came off pit road after an unscheduled stop. And, Bill, what happened? Right front tire, separation along the shoulder. A bunch of teams have been down here in the two pit, including his teammate represented the 12 of Ryan Newman. Some other guys were down here. You can see the car. This is behind their pit. Rusty Belt had brought it down here very slow. So that's the second tire. The first one, obviously, wasn't nearly this bad. So it's a right front tire problem for the two. And as we talked about, there is concern on pit road about this happening again. Unfortunately, Bill, that's probably going to happen again to the two before this race is over. Yeah, because there's nothing you can do about it now. 
Tony Stewart moving up to fifth, passing Greg Biffle. Man, I'll tell you what, he put that thing in overdrive, didn't he? You know, we, we look at these right front tires, we talk about it over and over and over. A lot of that issue is camber. Leading that tire in or out at the top. We'll take the right front tire. And that's down the straightaway. When the corner, you want the tire contact to be all the way, so you lean the tire in at the top. That's negative camera. So when you go down in the corner and the car goes down and travels, the tire contact will go all the way across the tire. We're going to get to the corner eventually. There we go. All it's a big way. track. It's a big track. <laughs> but the problem is, if you have too much camber, it rides on that inside shoulder down the straightaway and never gets a chance to cool the whole tire. And when you drop the pressures, you're flexing the tire more. You're, you're really leaning on the tire more when you have low pressure in them for at least, you know, 10 laps. The concern up and down pit road about the right front situation includes the leader, Ryan Newman's team, this on his radio a few moments ago. Ryan, that last set of tires, we had a spot where the right front came apart uh, about an uh, inch and a half wide uh, on the shoulder. Just want to make you aware of it. We're going to probably short pick it a little bit, not push it as far on this last stop because we can make it from the end. That's four foot. If you feel anything, we're in our window now. Obviously, we don't want to to get caught out on a caution, but uh, if you feel anything, we're ready for you with four tires. Ten four, I'll take it easy on it for a while. Yeah, that's exactly what we just talked about before we went to break. It's that, uh, you know, these guys are all thinking about it, and you're not going to probably go as far as you could normally go if you didn't have tire problems because you just got to be a little bit careful. So, uh, Ryan Newman with 75 laps to go, and he's inside that window now where he could stop and go to the finish. It's just a matter of when you want to. Here's our Napa field summary. Story on the day so far today. Seven leaders, most of them guys getting five bonus points. Whoop, caution. Caution's down, caution's down. Might be oil in four. And Jeremy Mayfield, the 19 car, appears to he's going to be the lucky dog award winner. That's a very lucky dog, because yes, especially in this points race, that's going to mean a lot. Could mean a lot. They got a piece of debris they've been talking about in turn three for a while. Now there's a report possibly of oil in turn four. So that's the reason for the caution. Bad luck for Rusty Wallace. That's going to trap him two laps down by uh, having pitted under the green. Good luck for some of these guys like Mark Martin and Tony Stewart that are trying to catch Ryan Newman for the lead because they get to throw a fresh set of tires at it and close up on his bumper for the restart. Yep, they erased that nine and a half seconds that, he, that uh, Ryan Newman had on him. And I see Robbie Gordon coming down pit road with pit road closed, so that might be one of the reasons for the caution flag, 31 singular car. Oh, a nine second lead gone, how about that? Yes, uh, Jeremy Mayfield is yeah, Robbie, officially the lucky dog. Robbie went by his pit, and he is uh, driving in the garage, so. Apparently, they have decided to make a spring change on that car and figure out why its handling has been so well. Yeah, Robbie has today. been way off today, and he, he he's been up in that high groove and struggling a lot today. So uh, I think they're going to probably turn this into a test. So here we go with what will be a critical final set of pit stops. There are just 10 cars on the lead lap, so hopefully people won't be bouncing off each <laughs> other on the pit road with just that few cars. Yeah, hopefully. But uh, Don't, we'll see. We'll count it out. Ryan Newman separated from Mark Martin by a good number of lap cars, so he should have the clean in and off pit road and hold the lead unless something really goes wrong in his stop. See the gap there? Mark trying to catch up before that speed limit swipe right there. <laughs> and Jeff Gordon to follow them in. Marty? Yeah, four-time Dover winner Jeff Gordon had a terrific segment right there. Allen hits pit road, running third, tight end, loose off. Half pound up on the track, Marty picks a tight end. Half pound down the right rear to pick some loose off. Matty? Mark Martin expecting another stellar stop by his pit crew. Told Pat Trice in the car was a little bit tight near the end of that run, but did not want to make any adjustments, however. Remember now, every pit stop is for the championship. This is four tires for Ryan Newman in the 12, and a slight chassis adjustment to tighten him up just a tick. He's on his way to Day. Tight race car for Kurt Busch. Air pressure changes all the way around. A little work on the left front by Mark Full, the tire carrier. He's going to pull on that and quickly. Mark Martin got out second. 
Yep, held serve on the pit stop. Good stop, 13-9, too, for Martin's crew. We've seen them as far uh, be so great right at the, yeah, that's the green flag drop, so that might be an advantage for Mark to try to get by him. So Ryan Newman has dominated today, but Mark Martin won't back down. He is close in pursuit of a monster mile sweep. First, let's meet him. Matt Borland, crew chief, Hazlitt, Michigan. Ray Ocean, front tire carrier, Salisbury, North Carolina. Dennis Terry, front tire changer, Mooresboro, North Carolina. Britt Goodrich, Jack Mann, Gastonia, North Carolina. Trent Terry, rear tire carrier, Saginaw, Michigan. Joe Piet, rear tire changer, Wausau, Wisconsin. George Whitley, gas man, Chocolate North Carolina. Steve Berner, catch can, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And no matter what happens, whether something goes well or something goes poorly, the driver is always in the spotlight, especially in this chase for the championship. But I can tell you, these pit crews, not just the over-the-wall guys, feel the pressure every week as well. And they know they are nine races away from possibly winning the championship. Still under caution at Dover, Ryan Newman leads. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Mayfield. Trouble that's been ongoing through the day that brought him back to pit road a couple of times on this uh, yellow flag, Dave. Remember when he changed that radio under Green Wally? Yes, I did. Well, no, he didn't. Well, I mean, they handed it to him anyway. Exactly. There's no way he could have gotten that done. So finally, they uh, changed out, strapped it up on their first pit stop in here. And then they were not able to, however, communicate with Jeremy. So they uh, changed helmets, and now I believe they've got the problem fixed. So there's all kinds of wiring going on. And, and Dave, we're just watching thing. the car right now. You can see Jeremy, without his gloves on, is still working with the radio and trying to get everything hooked up. And now we just reach for the gloves and is starting to pull them on as uh, we get ready to go back to green. Dave? Just going to check in with Jimmy Fenning real quick here, Jimmy. You think you've got the car right for Kurt? Uh, we're, we're, we've been struggling tight all day, you know. Uh, hard down here, Marty. Robbie Loomis is going to call the green flag. You've got him in position. Can he win it? DuPont Chevrolet race team, they've worked incredibly hard all day. We're up there where we need to be. Got 65 laps to go with Jeff Gordon, the DuPont car. I think we can do it. These guys have worked hard at it today, Bill. At Borland, how was your right front tire on that car? Uh, it looked great, actually. On um, that run, we, we didn't have any issues, so uh, we're hoping uh, we won't have any issues on the last one and uh, hopefully bring it home. Are you just a tad slow on the get-go? I'm sorry? Were you just a little slow on the get-go? Yeah, we started a little bit there at the start, but then it seems to come around. It's more just being a little too free at the start. Well, we'll see if Mark Martin can take advantage on this restart. It's going to come with 65 laps to go. Jimmy Finney talked about the 97 car, Kurt Busch, being a little bit too tight. Well, how they fight that problem, they start the restarts on fresh tires very, very loose, and that's what Matt Moreland talked about the 12 car being. First car lap down, Jimmy Johnson in 12th place, the 48 car. Okay, Mark, if you're going to do it, I think you better do it now. It's definitely game on for the six right now. If he's going to get the 12, I think now you're right, Wally. Now is the time. Whoa, Tony Stewart, big slide into turn three. Nice save. I'm sure that has his heart pounded. Stewart hanging on in sixth place. Great rally from an ill-handling car for much of the early part of this race. His team kept working at it and working at it. And got it finally in that last segment of race where he was one of the fastest cars on the track. 3D action formulating here. Yeah, it's going to get busy. <laughs> oh. been underneath the 21 of Ricky Rudd, but he's got Brendan gone down there on the bottom, so he may get blocked in. It depends where the 77 goes. What are they saying about the 20, Matt? Tony Stewart restarted six. The best this race car has been all day was the last run. Tony said it was a little free to start with, but it came around nicely. He can drive it, but he would have loved to try to free it up in the center, but he was just afraid to touch the chassis. He was not happy with the last set of tires. The car started out way too loose and then started to tighten up. Last stop, four tires and fuel. He was told the set of tires we took off that car never should have been put on it. Uh-huh. Look at this knock. Well, 
I'm telling you, this is a real mess. Seventh place on back. All these cars seventh on back. If Allen said trying to get around the lap car, been and gone in the 77. And he's running just fast enough, or he's running pretty good right now. Yeah, he's running good, but the problem is he got all these guys on the same lap that are are racing and they're gonna have to get single file like they are now to get past him and then go back to racing each other. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight running ninth. Dale Jarrett, 88 running 10. Then a couple of lap cars. The 11th place car is Jeremy Mayfield in the 19. He's last on the lead lap. Front four have gotten away from the pack while this racing goes on behind them. Yeah, Newman's car uh, pretty fast on the get-go right there, so. Mark could not capitalize. Oh, Junior. I think Jarrett was on the inside up going down to turn one, so Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car just kind of moved up the racetrack to give Jarrett room. Got some trouble maybe with Greg Biffle. Biffle. Off the pace, fifth place car, Greg Biffle slowing down, turn four, Matt. A great run by Biffle. It's a loose wheel. Oh, man. Well, when you talk about this being a team sport, that is where it comes to manifest itself during the race. The crew's got to get its job done perfectly. You have to get five look. Oh, whoa. Did he pop one off, or I don't know. did he that get left, it off there quick enough? Left rear guy looked like he might have taken a lug nut off. He did, but was going to have to come back in. Let's see. Right front, Greg. Right front was loose. It looked like it was loose when he stopped the car and they put the jack under it. You can almost see the right front wheel move a little bit. Scott Ridge has had great problems in that 10 car. He's been behind the wall and on and off pit road a couple of times. So Biffle going by him as both go back out onto the racetrack. Up front, Ryan Newman has moved away from Mark Martin, opening up a one second gap on the second place car. We check the interval here. There's your race leader, Newman. And there are his pursuers, Martin and Gordon. Bill? And he's going to be tough to catch, Alan. Obviously, with just over 50 laps to go, if this race stays green, we don't expect to see any more pit stops. But if the caution should come out, then anything, and it's over, I do mean anything could happen. So Matt Borland, Matt Borland gave his driver a heads up a few moments ago. We get a caution at about 30 to go. We decide to stay out, just keep your eyes open. And if you see everybody behind us peeling off, make that call for them to come in. If it looks like everybody's going to come in and we're going to be stuck out there by ourselves, then we'll probably want to come in if you can make that call in time. Otherwise, we'll probably just stand out. So, you have to drive the car, keep your eye on the traffic, listen to the spotter, and then decide under caution if everybody else is going to pit and what you're going to do. So, Wally, good luck. <laughs> Simple job, yeah. isn't it, Bill? Man, oh man, these drivers, they earn their money, don't they, Benny? What are you gonna do? You're coming around, you're watching out, you're looking here, you got the commitment line, you got the best car all day, you're gonna stay out, you're gonna come in, our four tires gonna be charged. Man, oh man. The problem is, especially where those guys are pitted too, Bill, that, that you know, Matt can't see pit entry. And so, you know, by the time you see what's going on and you tell your driver, you may have passed if pit entrance if you want to make that pit stop. So that's why they leave it to the driver. You gotta keep one eye looking out the front and the other eye looking out the back. How do you do that? Well, well I'll teach you because when yeah. you shoot, it's similar. You have to use the same kind of sight pattern. You had to know that was coming when you kept that discussion going, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, my mic's dying, see ya. <laughs> that was reference to Bill's skeet shooting on the yeah. Discover Card Countdown to Green feature with Matt Kenseth at his cabin up in Wisconsin. There are a lot of clay pigeons out there that really like it. And by the way, for those of you who remember the reference earlier to Ryan Newman losing his mirror, when we were talking about him keeping an eye on the cards in the rearview mirror, the mirror he lost was the little mirror that mounts on the left side roll bar for watching traffic to your inside when you're getting ready to turn left into a corner. Not the main mirror up inside the car where you look at those that are directly behind you. Right. That little mirror that he lost would be a good one to see if the cars are going to be coming down pit road, though. Probably better than the one in the center of the car. I don't think he needs any mirrors today. No. So Newman out in front with a second and a half advantage and 50 laps to go. Time for our last commercial under green flag condition this, in this uh, race. This is a local break. 
We'll be keeping an eye on things for you here at the Monster Mile. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Those ATVs. Nobody's more in tune with motorsports than Yamaha. By Sunoco, official fuel of NASCAR. If it's good enough for NASCAR, it's good enough for your car. Sunoco. Brian Newman is the leader here at the Monster Mile. A day he has dominated so far, but still 41 more treacherous trips around this tough track to go. Newman leading Mark Martin by 2.9, uh, 2.29 seconds, rather. There are 10 cars on the lead lap. Most of the 10, the drivers competing in the chase for the next Oak Cup. Matter of fact, of the 10 drivers in the championship, Nine of them are in the first 11 spots in this race. One other well back because he had some troubles earlier. Matt Kenseth, we're talking about, who had the pit road crash at lap 119. Terry Labonte going a couple of laps down. And Ryan Newman, the 12 car, he just, he has driven away from Mark Martin, as Alan said, two and a quarter seconds. The lead over Mark now. Although the last time by, Mark was a little bit faster, but two and a quarter seconds to make up. Yeah, I don't think Newman has shown everything he has. I think he's driving the car comfortable. He's comfortable in the car, and he goes as fast as he needs to go. Ryan Newman, winner of both races here at Dover in 2003, led 162 and 106 laps in those two races, respectively. He's led 286 today. That, that lap, certainly Newman won't be fast because he was passing Kenny Schrader. Uh-huh. And Dale Jarrett showing a little speed. Mayfield showing a little speed. And Jeremy Mayfield has been the fastest car in the last couple of laps. And Elliot Sadler has been slipping back some in that 38 car. Yes, he has. So into the final 37 miles here, just tuning in. Late this afternoon, let's show you how we got to this point in the race. Lap number 15, first moment of the day when Casey Kane went up in smoke in turn two. He will finish 42nd on the day, engine failure on the nine car. 20th on lap 23 on the restart, Tony Stewart and Robbie Gordon playing bumper tag. Caved in the right front fender of Stewart's car. He issued a little payback to Gordon. Stewart's team since making repairs, he's come back through traffic. Vickers, 25 car, Bang. loose, 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 and boy, he got both ends of that race car. Fortunately, Brian, okay, tough hit there. On, on the restart, the 0-1 car of Joe Nemechek ran on the back of Mark Martin because some cars in front didn't go. And then watch this. Matt Kenza trying to get on pit road, enters too fast, spins out, and runs into the tire barrier full of water. Jeff Burton, little right front tire, hit the wall hard, and now everybody is concerned about that. You can see Burton's frustrations. Jimmy Johnson getting a penalty for speeding, exiting the pits. And so he lost a lot of track position there, dropped him at that time from 4th to 19th. Story of the day, Ryan Newman, a couple of guys who've gotten up to challenge him for the lead at various times. Kurt Busch led for a, a little while, but Newman back out in front of him. And then another close call trying to get to pit road. And this was almost a close call as Bobby starts backing up the racetrack, but fortunately stopped just before he got on the speedway. So Newman leading now 291 of the 367 laps. He has dominated today. A couple of other uh, bullet point stories. Drivers in the chase for the next L Cup. Most of them have gotten five bonus points for leading the lap today. Uh, besides Newman, Kenseth, Kurt Busch, Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. have all led a lap during an exchange of green flag pit stops. And the other thing is you watch the ticker come by and the drivers in the chase for the next L Cup are highlighted in the next L yellow. You'll see they're all bunched toward the front of the field. The, uh, the cream has risen to the top, if you will, today here at Dover. And the guys who've been strongest all season long have been strongest in this race. Let's get a final through the field for you, Bill. How about the race leader? Well, Alan, let me tell you everything that's gone wrong with that car today. Positions held by guys in the chase. Mark Martin knows every position, every lap is important. They have had a very impressive run today. They've had a very impressive season at Dover. They won here in June. He's currently running second. A good point, Steve, Marty. Pat Robbie Lumen.
Thomas told me this morning he was very worried about today because they didn't think they were that good. And early on, Jeff Gordon had a very ill handling race car. But now, in the last quarter of the race, the car has been excellent. They started 21st, currently he is in third. Dave? Exact opposite for Kurt Busch. They had a better car earlier in the race. Kurt Rado is true on lap 350. We've got this thing so messed up, I can't even drive it. If he maintains, though, he may stay right to the top of the chase for the next Hell Cup. The 88 of Dale Jarrett, what a great day they've had so far. Last time in, a wedge and air pressure adjustment for a tight race car. DJ hanging in the top 10. Matt? Three and a half hours ago, it looked like Tony Stewart was going to have a miserable day. Contact early with Robbie Gordon. Then he fought a wicked tight race car. They have worked themselves back into the race today, back into this title chase. He was as deep as 30th back on lap 19. Dave, he runs in six with a tight race car. Matt, since the last restart, Jeremy Mayfield has picked up four positions, a very fast race car, but he hasn't led a lap yet today, as Alan referenced just a few moments ago. That's something they really wish they had done, trying to move up from 10th place in the chase. Bill? Dave, after the race at Richmond, Jamie McMurray was heartbroken that he didn't make the chase for the championship. Their mission finished 11th in the standings, get to the stage in New York. They came in here 11th, they're trying to hang on to that, and it's been a wild ride for him. His radio didn't work, he didn't feel well, but he's trying to hang on to it. There's the eight car, and there's a 38 off the pace. He's off the pace. Looks like he has an engine problem. Wally, didn't he poof or something up in the third and fourth corner? Well, I saw him go really, really high up the racetrack, but not sure if he has an engine problem or he thinks he's got a tire issue. He has been very slow. Right rear they're talking about. He's been very slow for about the last five laps around the racetrack. Dave? No, you're correct. A flat right rear tire is what they're saying. They'd also been battling a little bit of an overheating problem, but they don't believe it was a big problem. So no motor issue. Flat right rear tire for Elliott. He came into the day, six in the chase for the championship, trying to move up, but this is not going to help. Right side tires only, and we'll see how much that costs Elliott Sadler. He was running 10th. It might, oh, he's gonna get a penalty too. And that's gonna cost him even more. Yeah, it looked like he might have been speeding just a little bit as he entered pit road. He was, according to NASCAR officials, so a pass-through penalty. Elliott Sadler will have to come back down pit road and drive through it at the 35 mile an hour pit road speed limit and then rejoin the competition. That's gonna hurt. Yes, it is. So 24 laps to go. We'll see where that shakes out for Elliott after he serves the penalty. He was past the uh, opening of the pit road before the crew called him in. We were doing a uh, through the field. Bill, you were about to tell us about Dale Earnhardt Jr. in ninth place. That's right. He's had an up and down day as well. The car right now really, really loose. But Junior came in here tied for the lead in the chase for the championship. There's a lot of things he learned from his dad. And certainly one thing is big picture, get the finish, get the points. And something about that Talladega race next week. It's been a nice recovery for Jimmy Johnson, the lap 174 speeding penalty for exiting pit road too fast. They had to come back down pit road. The car is very good right now for Jimmy, and if we do get a caution, he's in the 10th position. He would be the lucky dog because he is one lap down, and they could make some hay because the car is very good. They could pass some people. So there you go, your top 10 drivers, and uh, nine of them are on the lead lap. Johnson, the first car, one lap down. And Elliott Sadler just having served his drive-through penalty and still waiting for the scoring to cycle through on him to see where that knocks him back to. It's gonna knock him back. The reason I thought that I thought maybe the 38 car had an engine problem, we'd heard some discussions during our one of our caution flag Pierce commercials that he might have to be pushing out some water. But obviously it was a flat tire, not an engine problem on the 38. And by the way, Matt Kenseth has just taken his car to the garage. He cannot gain any more positions with the remaining laps in the race. He is 30 laps behind the next car in line, and there's only 20 to go. So he's parked for the day. Kenseth will finish 32nd. Ouch. Let's see. Elliott Sadler's going to come out 20th. Four laps down. Mm. It's about, it's about three and change, almost three, almost four laps down to Ryan Newman. Dave? And the right side tires for Elliott were both up on air pressure. So there must be something else going on there. By the way, on that motor BP, I did check with Doug Gates. He said the water temperature was about 230. There was some water being pushed out, but he wasn't concerned about it. Oh, good. Thank you, Dave. Just thinking on the Elliott Sadler, if he had not gotten the speeding penalty, he might have come off that unscheduled stop about 13th or so. So 25 points. Yeah, well, let's see. 
Four, eight, ten, four, yeah. Yeah, it might be about 20 points that just cost him the, the extra speeding penalty. So, story on his day, uh, gone south in the closing laps. No such thing for the race leader, Ryan Newman, who continues to set the fastest lap on the track, circuit after circuit after circuit. You see Newman coming into the picture right up behind Elliott Sadler. What a car, what a drive, but great work by the pit crew today, too. He, he's gotten off pit road first on every stop when he's come down. Oh, he has been just phenomenal. But Season. you know what? He was pretty doggone good here last year as well. Yes, he was. Let's talk about the season for Ryan Newman. He won eight races last year. This year, but one. Michigan in June. And a lot of people picked Ryan Newman to win the championship and wondered, after the struggles they had over the spring and the summer, if that would be possible, if he would even make the chase for the next L Cup. But a nice late rally in August got him into the chase. He had a couple top five finishes in three races that kind of pushed him over the top. And now Newman with a chance, after getting evened up with everyone, to make another late fall push like he did a year ago and try and uh, deliver a knockout punch for this uh, championship trophy. It's just interesting how these guys rise to the occasion, like yeah. Jeremy Mayfield did in, in Richmond. And, you know, th these guys led all the laps. They're going to get the points for that. They've won the race. They did just everything that he could practically do. And if that's he what they have to do for the rest of the year. If he can last for 15 more laps, that's the problem he has now. Mr. Weber. Yeah, Alan, the story you just told, believe me, the pit crew, they heard those rumblings, and they know people are watching them, question whether or not they'd be able to make it. So when they did get in, it was almost like, okay, we're going to reaffirm our own personal beliefs. We know we can do this. Now we're going to show we can do this. They're showing it now. I, I have never heard. Bill, just thinking back to the interview with Ryan Newman after he fell out of the race in New Hampshire a week ago. I never heard somebody who fell out in the first race of 10 that'll decide the championship sound so optimistic. Remember what he said? Yeah, he yeah. said, yeah, they said that if we run the next nine like this one, everybody else is in trouble. And that's exactly what they believe. They have tremendous confidence. And they, he's had that basically since he got in here. And a lot of that comes from Matt Borland, who really doesn't like talking, doesn't like telling you about his car or anything. But he has a very quiet confidence. And uh, they, they, they don't, I'm doing remarkably well. They're in an ideal situation. He has been the man so far today. As you look at Matt Borland, the great relationship he and Newman have, both with engineering backgrounds. You, if you're uh, a regular NASCAR fan, you've heard the story before, but you talk about chemistry between people. They just, they think the same way, they, they speak the same way, they race the same way. They're just philosophically on an even keel all the way around. It really works, the two of them. Unlike you and I. Yeah. They speak that engineering speak. Here's a race for fourth and fifth places as Dale Jarrett, the 88, tries to get up and do something with Kurt Busch for that uh, number four spot. Got 10 more laps, and right now, Jarrett is uh, in fifth spot right now. About the same speed last time by, this time by, about the same speed again. So, it's probably going to be Kurt Busch getting home behind traffic if 88 is able to get by. Underneath Brendan Gaughan. Gaughan's going to give him plenty of room. Junior. Yeah. Well, that, you said that that's a surprise, but I mean, Junior is a ninth. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Newman has lapped just about everyone. So Junior falls a lap down, and you see the standings as they run as we get into these closing laps. Kurt Busch, Jeff Gordon, and then it really starts to get jumbled up from there. Sadler losing some ground with the uh, run. Now that minus 100 points if they finish as they are now. Kenseth with the 32nd place finish. And Ryan Newman. And, and here's where the twist to this system comes in. If you look at that, 111 points down. He's going to lead the most laps and win the race, but he's only gotten help. There's that word again from a couple of guys today. The other championship chasers are all going to finish in the top 10. That's what I said last week. In order for these guys... I think they have a shot. Everybody in front of them is going to have to have a problem at least once. Well, Kenseth has had a problem today. Elliot Sadler has had a problem today. We've got eight to go. Perfect. Yep. Ryan Newman coming in today, 136 points behind, so only looking to gain 20 or so. There's Chrissy. Looking on, writing down the lap times. And 
keeping her end of the bargain on the pit card on race day. Married, of course, this past off season. And watching her husband try and oh. get the job done hey, here at the Marshall that? Mile. Jared caught him. Now, Mike Ford told me, Dale Jarrett's crew chief this morning, he told me we're going to be a sleeper today. He said, we haven't shown a lot this weekend, but I think the changes we've made and the way our car came around at the end of practice, we can really do something today. And, and you just keep an eye on us. I think we'll be your sleeper. And here comes the 20 car. Tony Stewart blows in right behind Kurt Busch. I'm sure Jimmy Finning is on that radio telling Kurt, look, that's five points that Jarrett was able to get on you. Now Tony Stewart trying to get five more points. Each position worth five points in NASCAR next up truck. Standings. And you hate to lose it five laps from the end. You know what I mean? That, you don't want to get past with five, four, three, two, one to go. But considering Tony Stewart was as far back as 30th today. Whoa, as, man, that car's loose. As up, Matt uh, reported earlier, he's going to be really happy to get himself a sixth place oh, yeah. finish if that's what it ends up being, I would think. Bush has got his hands full. Check that out. Lowest 30th place. Highest fifth. So he's almost as far forward as he's been all day. So good job overcoming difficulties for the uh, Home Depot crew today. And great job by, by Ryan Newman and company. Two miles from victory here at Dover. Ryan Newman. If he can make it a final lap and a quarter with no troubles, we'll lead the most laps today. Collect the five extra bonus points for that. It'll be 325 of 400 lead at Dover if he makes it around this final time. Awfully impressive run today by Newman, the entire 12 crew. Man, 300. Five, 400. That's big, isn't it? That's pretty big. Started on the outside of the front row, took the lead at the drop of the green flag into the first quarters, and has just about held it the entire afternoon. Dominating performance by Ryan Newman. He wins at Dover. An impressive margin of victory. It's going to be better than seven seconds. Back to second place, Mark Martin. And they were bumper to bumper on a restart with 65 to go. Newman gapped him that much in the final stage of the race. Second win of 2004 for Ryan, his third Dover win in six races here. In the last four Dover races, that would be 1,600 laps. Ryan has now led over 600 of those laps. Bill? On top of the pit box with Matt Borland, crew chief for Ryan Newman. That's a great way to rebound a dominating run. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, guys did an awesome job here in the pits today, and uh, Ryan did an awesome job on the track. And uh, just like thank all the guys at Penske, the engine shop, the engineers, uh, everyone just did an awesome job getting this car uh, running good today. And uh, go ahead and have a good finish. Was there ever a doubt in your mind after what happened last week at Loudon that you needed to bounce back here? <laughs> Yeah, we definitely needed to bounce back here. We need to bounce back another eight times. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got our one uh, mulligan, and hopefully uh, we'll have just that'll be the only one we got. Enjoy the celebration. Thank you very much. Hey, the crowd's enjoying the celebration with him. Man, that was a burnout. So Ryan Newman will head to Victory Lane here at Dover International Speedway, gaining a little bit of lost ground back on the new championship leader, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, I guess so. First spot, Kurt hey. Busch second. Kurt Busch is one point. Yeah. Still and very, very close. I mean, you look at right on down. Right. Very close. 100 points isn't a whole no. lot, especially with Talladega looking yes. uh, on the horizon next week. Jamie McMurray leading Kevin Harvick in that race for the 11th spot by 99 points with eight races now to go in the season. Let's hear from Mark Martin, a second place run today. Climbs out of his race car first here in June, Mark second today. A very impressive run by both you and this team. Well, man, what a great race team with this Viagra crew, Pat Trison and Wally Brown and Todd and all these guys. Great pit stops. Way to rally, man, but that 12, you couldn't do it. I thought that last run, okay, here we go. I show you what we got, and he showed us what we what he had. I tell you what, he was long gone. I did everything I could there, just uh, wasn't any way to stay with him. 
Mark Martin entered the day seventh in points. He's now fifth, 57 markers out of first. Marty? Well, we'll let Jeff Gordon uh, climb out here, and, and what a hard-fought day for this 24 team. They just did not have a very good handling race car early in the race, but at the end, the car seemed very good, Jeff. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, you know, we made big gains, that's for sure. Real proud of these guys uh, for, for that effort, man. Uh, great pit stops and just never gave up on it. Um, you know, early on, man, I tell you what, I wouldn't have uh, given us a shot at a top 20, but, uh, you know, we, we, we kept fighting on it and fighting with the car, and um, we finally got it pretty decent there and got some good track position. So uh, real proud of Robbie and uh, all the guys on this DuPont Chevrolet, and, um, you know, that's the type of effort that it's going to take for us to, to win this championship. Our new championship leader said we did what we had to do today, guys. Dave? Tony Stewart climbing from the Home Depot Chevy right now. Tony, last week, big disappointment. A lot better this week. A big game finishing sixth. If you say so. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's, I do say so. I think it's a good thing, man. What are you feeling like right now? Kicking Robbie Gordon's butt, to be honest, but uh, it's racing. So we'll be heading back next week. All right. Tony, moving on, guys. Obviously disappointed at uh, the incidents of earlier on today that um, Tony was trying to recover from for most of the afternoon. I think Victory Lane will be a little bit happier place, Bill. Well, let's find out. Ryan Newman with a big smile on his face. Surrounded by his crew. He knows the way to Victory Lane here. And a big celebration. He already got a handshake from his crew chief, Matt Borland, a hug from his dad. Family's here. Here comes his wife, Chrissy. Well, I guess that car was uh, was pretty good, huh? It wasn't bad. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, awesome job by everybody. Got to thank the guys back at the engine company. They put a heck of a horse under the hood. Um, you know, Altel, Sony, Dodge, uh, Mobile One. Um, you know, all Gatorade Victory Lane. I mean, it's been been a while since we got to one, and that even feels good. <laughs> Tell me about your commitment to doing well here, Ryan, after what happened last week at New Hampshire. Uh, you know, it's commitment week in, week out. Um, just, uh, you know, we, we hit the setup right, uh, we hit everything right uh, today. Uh, you know, wish we could have got the pole, but that's, I guess, being a little bit greedy. They still don't, still don't uh, award points for poles, so we didn't hurt ourselves there. But you almost predicted it after you fell out of the race last week, saying if we run like this in the next nine, we're going to be okay. We're going to be a little wet, too. It's pretty cold, isn't it? Uh, that is a little chilly. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of guys came here and tested. We'd use a lot of our tests just to get in the top ten. And, uh, you know, we've learned a lot about the, a lot about these tires. Goodyear's got a great tire here and learned a lot about them uh, throughout the season. And uh, I think we're finally played, uh, fin finally finished playing catch up. We get to go play now. All right. See you at Talladega. Best of luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Ryan Newman is the winner at Dover. Majority of the chasers all had great runs, including Kurt Busch. Solid fit today, Kurt. Not bad. The Sharpie Ford ran good, and just the, the motor was more south than the car was. We just seemed to pull down the straightaways harder than what we could go through the corner. So great job for the Ford campaign with the motors, with, with uh, Roush and Yates. Just w trying to work on it. Today was a solid finish for us, and we've got eight races now. Strong run, finishes fifth. Marty? Strong run for Dell Jarrett as well, finishes fourth, and you got around Kurt Busch there at the end, didn't you? Yeah, we had to work for that one. Uh, Mike did a great job of adjusting uh, this UPS Ford, and uh, say thanks to all the UPS employees that have uh, stood by us through all of this. Uh, we've got some good race cars coming and some good races coming up, so we appreciate the support we get from them. That's four top ten finishes in the last six races for DJ Allen. And just to kind of make sense of uh, Tony Stewart's comments, if you did not see the earlier part of the race, this was in the early laps on a restart. Robbie Gordon kind of got a run to the outside of Tony Stewart, and they made that contact. Which is perfectly legal. I mean, you can do that on a restart. You can pass to the right. And so Tony came back and, and expressed his displeasure. Gets in the back of the 31 car, moves him up to racetrack, and goes on. And, and I guess that was the last time they made were around each other the rest of the day. Doing all that. I think did a little bit of damage to uh, Tony Stewart's right front fender. So just uh, so everyone understands where that comes from if you weren't with us for the uh, early stages of the race. Here are the results of the MBNA America 400 at Dover. Ryan Newman with his second win of 2004 and his third at the Monster Mile. And Mark Martin thought this might be a place for victory. Came out a little bit short. Most of the championship chasers finishing in the top 10. Eight of the top 10 as a matter of fact. Elliott Sadler wound up 20th after the flat tire and speeding penalty on pit road at lap 373. And Rusty Wallace survived two unscheduled stops to finish 13th. These guys had a long, long day at right Dover. Did. Casey Mears had a great race car early in the day and uh, just didn't work out. He had an unscheduled pit stop. And, and then we see Matt Kenseth. 
32nd place today. Kenseth is going to lose 89 points to first place. He was 10 behind entering the race. He's 99 behind now. And the final few finishers in today's event. Again, a quick look at the championship standings. And now there are eight races to go in the chase for the next L Cup. And it moves on from here to Talladega. Next Sunday, NBC, 1.30 Eastern Time, NASCAR Next L Cup Racing from Talladega, beginning with Discover Card Countdown to Green. It should be wild. And next on TNT, The Matrix.